You're in the Paracast, the gold standard of paranormal radio. And now, here's Gene Steinberg. As usual, in the last few weeks, every time we do a brand new episode of the Paracast, we have weird things happening with Skype. And there are two versions of Skype that are currently active. There's a Skype 8 and there's a Skype 7. What happens here with Skype 8 is that a lot of things don't work on it. You get bad connections, you can't use normal features. So we use something called Skype 7.5 or something thereabouts. And that is considered a classic version of Skype, which is why I call it that way. It's 7.5.8 for the Mac. And what Microsoft is going to do, at least they're trying to do something which is decent, which is a rare thing in terms of software. But what Microsoft is going to do is continue to offer the older versions of Skype for a while. So people like us who want to do real radio shows and have really solid connections can do it. That's about as much technology as we do here. Our technology show, The Tech Night Out Live, will possibly cover this in more detail in the next episode. In the meantime, Randall is our weekly co-host again, Jay Randall Murphy, and we welcome Nigel Watson from the UK. Hi. Hello. I just wonder with the way the politics are going, whether the UK even wants to talk to Americans anymore. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it is a bit of a a minefield to say the least. Um, I suppose um, a lot of it is um, because of Donald Trump's tweets, which seem to get people fired up about things. And we've got the British equivalent of Boris Johnson, who is always um, putting his foot in it as well. So, yeah, it's an inflammatory period in politics, really, with, um, I suppose, social media like this as well, all add fuel to the flame of controversy, really. Well, his uh, visit to the Queen there didn't uh, <laughs> go over all that well either. <laughs> oh, yeah. Anyway, Randall has no problem. He's Canadian. And because he's right, Canadian, yeah. <laughs> he's, of course, a, a preferred individual, so we don't have to worry about him. <laughs> Nigel, I want to thank our mutual friend, Tim Beckley for recommending that I bring right. you on the PowerCast. He speaks very highly of you. And Tim, as many of us know, is kind of a co-producer of the show. He suggests guests every so often, gives us some interesting ideas about whom to talk to. And I was looking mm. over the background for Nigel Watson, which is really fascinating because you've been involved in Fortian investigation, the paranormal, whatever, for mm. many, many years. And I, it looks here like you got your BA degree in psychology. Does that mean you're really in the right field now? Ufology got me interested in psychology because obviously it was a, a huge human factor in things like perception and how people report things. So um, it seemed a bit of a natural progression for me to sort of um, take an interest in it. And then I, I, I studied it as a, as, a psych, um, as a degree option, really. And um, there it does give you a, a bit more insight into, you know, how, you know, how people perceive things and the different term. Um, Things that can uh, affect people's um, uh, view of of, of things, um, but um, I suppose a lot of uh, subjects like this can be quite specialist, really. So I think it, it's a kind of like you can take a narrow focus and look at some aspects of ufology from um, from using psychological knowledge, but you know I, I think it's down to the individual as well of knowing something about people's background and um you know lots of other factors as well and i suppose if you look at the psychological angle you don't really have to regard ufos as spaceships or time travelers or anything like that you can just um look at it in terms of just uh, human perception rather than as anything uh, beyond that obviously you know for our ufo cases that stretch just normal psychological explanation. So um, it, 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 sort of, it was quite helpful and, and useful to 
um, look at that subject. And I think that's the thing with ufology. It can lead people into studying a, astronomy or, or even, um, you know, ancient history because of the ancient a astronaut theories. So I, I think um, uh, ufology can open up lots of other areas for people to study further. And, you know, that's kind of what I like about the subject. In fact, you can, you know, explore it further, um, you know, from and whatever it, you're interested in, you can kind of follow those lines of inquiry. Um, so, and I think there's still plenty of areas for people, you know, to, to explore that, that people have either ignored or, um, or are just virgin territory, you know. One thing I find interesting here is the comparison between the UFO field in America, and I'm barely part of that, I guess. Of course I am, you know. And the UFO field in the UK, when I bring on people like you, Nigel, and Philip mm. Mantle and other people, I find yeah. a much more enlightened view that you're willing to look at a very much wider picture. And maybe that's why the 40 in Times is British, isn't it? Looking yeah. at a lot of strange things are going on, not just <laughs> strictly concerned with spaceships, not just strictly yeah. concerned with individual causes of the phenomenon, but the possibility there's an interrelationship between the things that go bump in the night, near-death experiences, abductions, people seeing UFOs, not that they aren't real. Mm. But that we um, are in some ways participants in the phenomenon, not just seeing things in the sky and recording them, but mm. a lot closer. You get where I'm coming from? Yeah. Uh, ironically, uh, a lot of us were inspired by the writings of John Cale, you know, the American journalist and you know, writer of things like Operation Trojan Horse and, you know, the Mothman prophecies. And he kind of opened up the subject to to a wider a viewpoint beyond the extraterrestrial theory. And he wrote a lot in um, Flying Saucer Review um, before his books came out in the sort of um, uh, 1970 uh, onwards. And um, I think because he looked up the f uh, folklore of um, uh, in relation to UFOs and that sort of area and just taking it beyond the extraterrestrial nuts and bolts theory. I think that inspired a, a lot of British people because it was in, you know, the premier UFO magazine, which was Flying Source Review. And also there were other people like Jacques Vallée and his um, passport to Magonia and several other writers uh, in, in Britain who looked at... Um, you know, the ancient past and stories in folklore and compared, you know, stories of little people and um, fairy rings and that sort of thing and related them to to the UFO phenomenon and to show that there might be a, it might be a continuous thing that for, you know, literally centuries we've been seeing strange things in the sky and even entities and, you know, other rumours associated with things in the sky, so it's it, it's not a completely new thing. And I think also John Keel inspired a lot of us in England to look at old newspaper files to rediscover the um, uh, airship sightings in 1909 and 1913, where people saw odd things in the sky and, and interpreted them as uh, German airships coming to survey our country in preparation for an invasion. So, um, you know, I think with with that perspective in mind, we, you know, we tend to look at some American ufology as being a bit too literal and too, you know, spaceship orientated. If you're a Paracast Plus member, we'll also be featuring Tim Beckley with Jay Randall Murphy on this weekend's episode of After the Paracast. Go to plus.theparacast.com for more information. You have a lot more to talk about with Nigel Watson. Our weekly co-host is Jay Randall Murphy. You're in the Paracast. <laughs> We also have swag. You know, we have all these exclusive Paracast things that you can buy 
We've got like, I guess, 60 or so different items and entails t-shirts, sleeves for notebook computers, iPad cases, mouse pads, the Paracast jumbo tote bag, all sorts of t-shirts and jackets and stuff like that for men and women. We have a Paracast aluminum water bottle. All this stuff, you go to store.theparacast.com, store.theparacast.com. What makes it special is that the items are the best quality, you know, great T-shirts, fabrics, and they have our official logo on them. That's what makes them special in multiple sizes and colors. We even have stuff for children, stuff for women, stuff for men. We have all sorts of sizes, like small up to X large. A lot of good stuff. That's the swag from the Paracast. You go to store.theparacast.com, stop by, and take a shopping tour. Let's talk tough. Let's talk comfort. Let's talk about down-home value. Made in the USA blue jeans, like you wore as a kid. Remember? There's a place down in Tennessee Where they make blue diamond gusset jeans They so pride in every stitch Guarantee you love the way they fit Put a diamond gusset in the crotch where you need it most. Blue diamond gussets got it. Others don't. For good old fashioned comfort, get diamond gusset jeans. Every stitch guaranteed. And our Defender motorcycle jean comes Kevlar reinforced. See them at GUSSET.com. That's gusset.com. Or call 888 848 7738. That's 888 848 7738. Diamond gusset jeans got it. Others don't. It's a no-brainer. A Big Berkey water filter is the one you need, period. You need a water filter that removes chlorine, fluoride, pharmaceuticals, BPA, and other endocrine disruptors, pesticides, bacteria, viruses, and much more, right? And does it all at only two cents per gallon. Get the original and most trusted name in gravity water filtration, Big Berkey. And now GCN listeners receive 5% off ceramic filter systems using code GCN. Call or click 1-877-99-BERKEY or BigBerkeyWaterFilters.com. That's 1-877-99-BERKEY. Hey everyone, Proactive MD has an incredible offer for our radio listeners only. Stay tuned for our exclusive offer that includes a free charcoal pore cleansing brush and free shipping. Proactive MD with prescription strength adapalene can heal and prevent future breakouts. Today, for just $19.95, we're offering listeners the three-piece Proactive MD system with free shipping plus a free gift, the new charcoal pore cleansing brush. Get this exclusive offer by calling now, 1-800-583-8662 or go to Proactive.com and enter promo code radio you heard right proactive md plus free shipping and a free gift the new charcoal pore cleansing brush you'll get all this for just $19.95 and their 60-day money-back guarantee you're guaranteed to get clear and stay clear or you get your money back call now 1-800-583-8662 that's 1-800-583-8662 or go to proactive.com and enter promo code radio again go to proactive.com and enter promo code radio Healthcare reform is confusing. With the loss of the Obamacare mandate, those needing help can now choose an affordable alternative. By joining Liberty HealthShare, you're part of a community of health-conscious Americans all over the country who control their own healthcare costs and choices. Liberty HealthShare is not insurance. It is an association of self-pay patients who unite with like-minded people to share the cost of their medical needs. Neighbor helping neighbor. Learn more now by going to libertyoncall.org. That's libertyoncall.org. We'd like to hear from you. If you have a comment or question about the Paracast, send it to news at theparacast.com. That's news at theparacast.com. And don't forget to visit our famous Paracast community forums at forum.theparacast.com. So Randall has decided that he will live in the world of echo, echo, echo. And I don't believe that we should (laughs) respond to the word echo, echo, echo. It's like a canyon, Echo Canyon, Canyon, Canyon. It's not a bad echo. I was thinking that last week on After the Paracast, what we did with Randall is we made him sound like one of the chipmunks, like Alvin. All right. Remember Alvin and the the chipmunks? Yeah. Okay, so so last week we made him sound like (laughs) Alvin, and this week he's going to live in an echo. It's better than living in a bubble, let me tell you. (laughs) <laughs> it really is. But no, Randall, Randall is, I will say this publicly, without exception, this guy is great. 
and I'm so happy that he decided to work with us on the Paracast, but more importantly, that he's turning himself into a real radio broadcaster. Randall, did I know? Suck it up. You don't get any more compliments, okay? Suck, suck it up. <laughs> oh, that was good. You can just keep going as long as you want there, Gene. I'm, I'll, I'll just go with uh, what? Up it what? all up in. Yeah. What? <laughs> Actually, I've, I've, done, I've done previous interviews. <laughs> anyway, with Nigel, the thing that interested me, of course, is that you have a very wide and balanced spectrum of interest in UFOs. And I'm looking at the books you started writing. So mm. you've been interested in this subject, obviously, since before you got your degree. That takes us back to the 70s yeah. or something yeah. like that. You must have been like yeah. two years old. <laughs> I was a sort of teenager when um, man landed on the moon, and that's what so I got really interested in the subject sort of late 60s. And uh, it was a sort of exciting time then when all the you know, moon landings occurred and you know, lots of theories about life out there. And um, also um, uh, things like Chariots of the Gods by Eric von Daniken was serialised in the sort of Sunday newspapers. So I sort of read all, everything I could about space exploration and, um, you know, which segued into UFOs, really. So it was a downwards slope then. <laughs> oh, dear. Yeah, so I, I suppose that was the thing that um, back then, I don't think there was such... Um, establishment support for, you know, the search for extraterrestrial intelligence, even that was seen as rather, you know, on the margins of science. So it's interesting now that, um, you know, that is something more uh, acceptable because of the discovery of exoplanets. There's far more effort being put into, you know, searching for any signals from outer space. But, you know, rather frustratingly, that's as hard to find as evidence for UFOs, really. So, you know, <laughs> things then still have, are still ongoing, really, and we've still got a lot of, you know, mysteries for us to explore. As a psychologist, when you're describing the descriptions of what we'd call UFOs and aliens today by people in the past, do you think they were seeing the same things as we are today, but didn't have the vocabulary we do? Or do you think they were actually seeing completely different types of things like, you know, with fairies, little people with wings and you know, gnomes with hats or, yeah. or, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I, I think um, people tend to interpret things in terms of their own, you know, social and cultural um background really and so um you know with the phantom airships people were reading about real airships being developed by zeppelin in germany so in a way it was a kind of context of oh there's a light in the sky so we automatically assumed it was a german zeppelin or um in America in 1896 and 97, there was this great airship scare there where people assumed it was the work of some secret inventor who'd been there to create this wonderful full flying machine that was flying over the States. And before that, uh, say, people saw a light in the sky and might interpret it as um, a, a sort of um, ghostly wis will of a wisp or as an angel or a fairy. So I, I suppose the context of it is um, very much important uh, with anything that's sort of ambiguous. And people, I suppose, at first they don't, we can't believe our own eyes. And then they have to kind of interpret it in terms of what, you know, what's going on, really. Um, and it's quite interesting. Years ago, I, I saw something in the headlines of our local newspaper up in Scunthorpe, which said that um, radar picked up mystery signals. And they assumed it was illegal immigrants um, flying in to Lincolnshire. Whereas only a few years before that, if it had been a flying saucer wave going on or anything, people would have said, you know, it's um, mystery signals of a flying saucer. So sometimes it's context, you know, the context can affect people. I suppose some people interpret this as uh, there is a sort of a UFO intelligence which yeah, projects an image of itself in terms of what we can understand. So aliens in the past would 
you know, portray themselves as um, fairies or things in fiery ships and, and, and things, you know, so that people would be able to uh, grasp it. Otherwise, um, you know, people might not even be able to come to grips with it at all. Or there's the other point of view that there's quite a lot of phenomena, you know, with things like as mundane as meteors or of a moon or even stars or anything can look quite spooky in certain circumstances. So perhaps, you know, there's a lot of natural phenomenon that could trigger sightings, not just now, but in the past. But, you know, there again, you know, it's down to how people interpreted things. I find it fascinating also things like ball lightning, which is something else that's only just about been accepted by science, has got quite a lot of peculiar characteristics. And I think it's a good possibility that a lot of people who've reported UFOs have actually seen ball lightning. So, you know, in a way, if you look at UFO data, you can discover other rare phenomenon in it. Um, so, you know, I think it's worthwhile for science to look at this data. In, in your book, uh, you've got uh, one of them that you wrote, uh, UFOs of the First World War. Okay, and so, yeah. so on the cover there, we see a, kind of a, a red uh, triplane, this red baron type of thing. And then up above in the clouds, you can see there's this sort of massive looking saucer. Mm. So, so you, you know, would the pilot of the, of the triplane look up and see a Zeppelin or would they see something that looks more like the picture and just um, only describe it as a Zeppelin because they don't know what else to call it? Yeah, I think that's it. I think um, a lot of the newspaper reports were of um, just lights in the sky, and but some people imagined there was a sort of dark, you know, body above the, the light. So in a way, um, you know, people can add features to something, and you know, in the American airship scare. People saw things with all sorts of rotors and wings and flaps and things. So, but you know, these were incredible things that didn't even look, you know, like any aircraft we've ever seen. Yeah. Nigel Watson will continue with J. Randall Murphy and Gene Steinberg. You're in the Paracast. <laughs> Visit GCNlive.com today. Looking for that edge during those intimate moments? We see many ads for enhancement, but the side effects include death. At GCN Team, we should change the Healthy Body Brain and Heart Pack to the Healthy Libido Pack. The brain and heart are not the only organs that require a healthy vascular system. For proper blood flow at the right moment, go to GCNTeam.com or call 877-878-4203. That's 877-878-4203. That's 877-878-4203. Are you afraid to go to the mailbox because of letter after letter from the IRS? Are they stacking on more and more penalties and interest? By now, you know the problem won't go away on its own. Don't let the IRS chase you to your grave with penalties and interest and liens and levies. You need real help now. I'm Dan Pilla. I wrote the book on tax debt settlement, and I helped thousands of people solve tax problems they thought couldn't be solved. I can help you too. Call 800-34-NO-TAX or go to my website, danpilla.com. That's danpilla.com. danpilla.com. For USA Radio News, I'm Wendy King. The New York Times says the top lawyer at the White House apparently had quite a bit to say to Robert Mueller's team as it looks into Russian interference in the 2016 presidential election. Don McGahn's the top lawyer for the White House, the legal point man for everything from judicial nominations to the Russia investigation. The New York Times reports McGahn's role in that has been complicated, not only helping plot the president's legal strategy, but also as a witness for special counsel Robert Mueller and a a cooperative one at that, leads that Mueller's investigation might not have had otherwise. Reacting from his New Jersey golf resort, the president tweeted he allowed McGahn and others to fully cooperate with the special counsel, including, as he frequently does, no collusion, no obstruction, witch hunt. You're listening to USA Radio News. 
Hamilton was adopted from a rescue in 2008. He really likes to be around people. I get out my mat and I'm doing a downward dog and he's underneath. He's quite the pug about town. He gets invited to a lot of parties. He knows he's a pretty big deal. Look at this little face. I do not love him. Hamilton the Pug, Instagram star and shelter pet. Amazing adoption stories start in shelters. Visit the shelterpetproject.org to find a pet near you. Brought to you by Maddie's Fund, the Humane Society of the United States, and the Ad Council. Now you can fly anywhere in the world and pay discount prices on your airline tickets. Book a flight today to London, Paris, Madrid, or anywhere else you want to go. And pay a lot less guaranteed. Call the International Travel Department right now at low-cost airlines. 800-215-5141. 800-215-5141. That's 800-215-5141. How well and how fast does heart and body extract work to improve blood circulation? Listen. My name is Ellis, and I'm 66 years old, and I live in Jacksonville, Florida. Two years ago, I was diagnosed as having clogged arteries. I had 70% blockage in one artery leading to my heart. They wanted me to go on Plavix, but I refused, knowing the negative side effects. Heart and Body Extract is a unique balance, synergy, and proportion of herbs reaching from head to toe at maximum absorption around 95% at the cellular level. Within the first month, I felt a dramatic difference. The heaviness in my legs was reduced, and within two months, I felt completely normal. Your natural organic herbal formula for heart health is Heart and Body Extract. Heart and Body Extract comes with a 100% ironclad money-back guarantee. Details at hbextract.com or call 866-295-5305 for Heart and Body Extract. Call 866-295-5305. 866-295-5305 for Heart and Body Extract. Clark, author of the UFO Encyclopedia and other books. You're listening to the Paracast. So what's going to happen here is one day Randall's going to say, you know, I'm doing this so well. Maybe what I could do. I'm doing this so well. Maybe what I could do is just keep my voice in the echo all the time. It's going to be like a rock and roll <laughs> singer. You know, rock and roll singers in the old days, back to Elvis Presley, they slapped his voice in echo. And you think, imagine talking that way all day long. Imagine if we had a built-in echo chamber, okay? They didn't With our voice that. box. And this way, we could just do anything we want. I have a big question before we go on here about what we see and what's there. So you're suggesting, Nigel Watson, that at least in some cases, we have the lights in the sky or whatever, and that's quite often what we photograph, that we very rarely see detailed photos of UFOs. And then we are filling in the details. The phenomenon is working, that, screwing around with our subconscious. Yeah, I, I think that can happen a lot. And uh, also, you know, it's better to get um, a story from a person, you know, fairly soon after the sighting, because I think another thing is that people... You know, there's this element of contamination where people might start, you know, reading books and things and then kind of add more to their story. I think that might be a factor in something like the Betty and Barney Hill case, which is one of the most famous uh, sort of early abduction cases. And they experienced missing time, but only within days of uh, experience Betty Hill had got a book um, by Donald Kehoe, I think it was, and that got her sort of interpreting what had happened in terms of, um, you know, flying saucers and UFOs. So I think if it wasn't perhaps for um, her finding that book, you know, it it just might have been a matter of just a few odd nightmares and, it you know, her, it might have just um, dissipated really, but as it happened um her and uh, barney was still haunted by some nightmares about this missing time period until the, it led to hypnotic regression so you know i think um people can read a lot into something that can be quite simple but you know obviously the betty and barney hill case is quite um, a complex case anyway so i think you know it's really hard to really get to the bottom of 
you know, what really happens with a lot of these sort of classic abduction cases. Well, this brings us to another good point for you as a person with a degree in psychology. What do you think of hypnotic regression as a tool for investigation? Well, funnily enough, in England, um, largely through the efforts of Jenny Randalls, who was head of the British Youth Research Association's investigation team back in the 70s, um, they kind of put a sort of voluntary ban on any hypnotic regression because they felt it was you know, disturbing to try and bring back painful memories to people. And also it kind of... I think, really, we don't believe so much in the power of hypnotic regression. I think the problem is the human brain doesn't work like um, a tape recorder. It's far more um, quixotic than that, really. So, um, And also, uh, with hypnotic regression, if it, people can be asked leading questions and it can be quite... Um, so people can be putting words into witnesses' um, mouths, really. And um, so you probably don't get so many British abduction cases, you know, largely due to that. And also there are certain abduction cases where hypnotic regression hasn't been used and people record things. But I think in terms of a bet in Barney Hill case, it was done in um, terms of therapy and counselling, really, to help Barney over his nightmares. Um, so in a way, that was trying to help them. Whereas I think the problem is ufologists can be a bit too enthusiastic just to sort of hypnotically regress people just to get out of, you know, data that they're eager to get out of rather than to think about how this will affect the person who's had these experiences. Because I think um, particularly abduction uh, instances. So you were saying, in other words, that you think um, people who are investigating UFO reports or abduction reports uh, might be less objective than a therapist who is simply trying to help their patient. Yeah, I think that's right. And particularly worrying that some ufologists learned how to become hip hypnotists themselves and I don't think it was really right to unleash unqualified people onto um, you know onto the public really uh, and I think you know like I say um, a lot of UFO encounters or abductions can be particularly traumatic instances and people can experience um, nightmares and flashbacks and different things and to bring in hypnotic regression doesn't necessarily drag out the, the true um, recall of what might have happened in a certain period of missing time. It might be just that you know the, the hypnotist has put words into the person's mouth or it's just sent them just further into a kind of um, a fantasy zone where they might um, you know just just uh, imagine what might have happened in that missing period rather than what might have actually happened. I think there's several instances where people have ever been abducted um, and they've been seen by people, uh, outside observers, to see that they're actually sleeping or um, in some sort of fugue state. So I think that's uh, something that that's worth noting that some oh, of these... Uh, sorry to interrupt there. Can you elaborate on that a little bit? Are you saying that actually there was an, a person, a separate person who is observing the person who was claiming to have an abduction experience, yeah. but they were right there and they were in sort of an altered, uh, an altered state psychological of, state? Yeah. Um, well, I can't name one offhand. I think somebody did observe out of somebody like George Adamski is a sort of notorious contactee and somebody said that you know when he had one of his experiences they observed him actually sleeping but I think that's an area that would be worth looking into because often people who um who were supposed to have um, joined like fairy rings went into a fugue state and thought they were um in the fairy ring for a few minutes or something, and then they came out of it, and it was like years later, you know, a sort of classic um, folk tale, really. Um, 
and in a way, you know, it can equate with abduction cases where people have um, gone away and uh, the t time has kind of disappeared for them and then until we come back to reality. But I think um, people can go into a fugue state and that's probably what, what might have caused their own missing time and abduction um, experience. The only thing is, you know, in certain cases like Betty and Barney Hill, there was two of them, but was usually if there are two people who are abducted, they're usually separated when they're on board the craft. And also there tends to be a dominant one, in this case Betty, who are really keen on putting across the story. And then Barney was less keen on you know, getting publicity. It, same with the um, case of um, Calvin Parker and Charles Hickson, who you know the two fishermen. They they encountered um, uh, well, they saw something like a blue flashing light, and then they saw a fish-shaped UFO, and then three really strange-looking mummy-like entities came and grabbed them. But when we were taken inside the UFO, we were both separated, and afterwards. Um, Calvin decided to stay quiet about it. He didn't want any publicity, whereas Charles um, was keen to get publicity and thought that, you know, we were going to get um, further um, extraterrestrial visitations, really. Um, and uh, I uh, predicted that, you know, there would be mass UFO sightings and that sort of thing. Nigel Watson, Gene uh, Steinberg, Jay uh, Randall Murphy, you're in. The Paracast. Thank you for listening to GCN. Be sure to visit GCNlive.com today. Do you need a website? Well, you can get a great deal on hosting services with Namecheap's legendary coupon code. They're offering substantial hosting discounts on shared hosting, business hosting, VPS hosting, reseller hosting, and even dedicated servers. Namecheap is preferred by millions. It's backed by a money-back guarantee. Use the coupon code LEGENDARY to cash in on the special deal at Namecheap.com, Namecheap.com. First came Attack of the Rockoids, and it was a critically acclaimed success. And now there is the coming of the Protectors. A former military intelligence man is contacted by a space woman in a dream. A dream that turns out to be a nightmare, because evil forces on our distant planet are planning to conquer the Earth. This is gripping science fiction of the classic kind. Attack of the Rockoids and the coming of the Protectors. Find out more at Rockoids.com. That's Rockoids, R-O-C-K-O-I-D-S, dot com. I'm David Hall, founder of Diamond Gusset, where we're proud of our 100% grown and sewn American-made jeans. Whether you're out for dinner, working on the farm, or on the road, Diamond Gusset Jeans offers a full spectrum of styles and sizes for any occasion. To find yours, visit gusset.com. That's G-U-S-S-E-T.com. Our loyal customers enable us to continue sponsoring Liberty Media outlets like the one you're listening to. In Liberty, David Hall, Diamond Gusset Jean Company. Most of you know that heart disease is the number one silent killer in the U.S. What if I told you for just $54.95 a month you could fight against heart disease naturally? At Heart and Body Extract, we've been helping thousands of people get back to a healthier heart. Don't just take my word for it. Check out all of the success stories at hbextract.com. Or to order, call 866-295-5305. That's 866-295-5305. hbextract.com. Don't risk it when you can take charge of it. Water is the single most important thing your body needs, so you want to be sure it's the best for you and your family. Since 2005, thousands have depended on Berkey Purified Water. The Berkey Guy provides the lowest price filtration systems in every size. For incredibly delicious water now and in an emergency, get to GoBerkey.com or call 877-886-3653. 877-886-3653.
Attention business owners and independent contractors. This is a money-saving message from Tax Mediation Services. If your business owes $20,000 or more in taxes, we can help you today, right now. Listen, dealing with the IRS is no picnic. It's an intimidating and extremely stressful process, and you don't want to go it alone. Our attorneys know every law, every tax break, and every possible opportunity to help you resolve and reduce your tax debt. And if you owe more than $20,000, you may be at the top of their hit list. So don't take your tax debt lightly because it will not go away on its own. The IRS can seize your bank accounts, your home, and even shut down your business. Call our tax experts today at 1-800-261-9818 and let us deal with the IRS while you focus on your business. That's 1-800-261-9818. Again, 800-261-9818. I'm David Hall, founder of Diamond Gusset, where we're proud of our 100% grown and sewn American-made jeans. Whether you're out for dinner, working on the farm, or on the road, Diamond Gusset Jeans offers a full spectrum of styles and sizes for any occasion. To find yours, visit gusset.com. That's G-U-S-S-E-T.com. Our loyal customers enable us to continue sponsoring Liberty Media outlets like the one you're listening to. In Liberty, David Hall, Diamond Gusset Jean Company. Hey, this is Marie D. Jones, the author of This Book is from the Future, and you are listening to the Paracast, the gold standard of paranormal radio. So we're talking about abductions, abductions involving two people, mentioning Betty and Barney Hill, and also Charles Hickson and Calvin Parker. That's the Pascagoula, Mississippi case. We've got a lot more to talk about, so we present once again our special guest, Nigel Watson. So it seems to happen that when you get two people, it's kind of a bit frustrating because usually there's there's a dominant person involved. And um, I came across a similar instance in um, England uh, where um, somebody called Paul Bennett, he was only 12 years old, but he was a dominant member of his group of friends. And um, once with one of his friends, he observed a sort of 12-foot high green robot, like scooping up soil. And uh, it was with his friend as well. And his friend said something like, I think I saw it as well, but if Paul says that's what was there, I believe it was there sort of thing. (laughs) So that's interesting. Yeah, yeah, so it's hard to pin down, really. Um, uh, and also, it, it, you know, it, it's virtually impossible to get hold of people just a few minutes after anything like that and to separate them and get their separate stories. I think also people's um, memories change over time as well. And it's quite interesting as well. I was just looking at sightings in the 1970s, and a lot of them... Um, of sort of like weird scaly creatures or things that look like werewolves or um, dwarf-like creatures. And there's a, a, a big variety of alien entities or things like robots and mummies. And whereas once you get into the 1980s, the kind of grey alien became very prevalent. You know, Whitley Strover's communion and the alien on the cover seems to dominate everything now. And um, so that might be a, a bit of social conditioning, whereas, you know, if people report an alien, it, it it should conform to how, you know, other aliens have been reported. Um, and so, you know, and I think films like Close Encounters of a Third Kind were important in sort of establishing, you know, the sort of spindly aliens with large heads, uh, which have dominated the subject since. You know, when you go back to things like hypnotic regression, I know mm. that. Our old friend Kevin Randall co-authored a book about that. And Uh, I'm always suspicious, always concerned about the practice of using hypnosis for Mm. trying to get memories of something. So the concern I have here is if we have 
a practice of retrieving information that's questionable, then it makes the case suspect in many ways. And I know I've had assurances up and down and sideways that hypnotic regression under proper conditions can be a valuable way of recalling forgotten or repressed information. And maybe that's good for psychologists and everything. Maybe they're trying to find evidence of some kind of trauma, but not Mm -hmm. a trauma meeting aliens, but maybe an attack or something like that, or a rape, as a matter of fact. Something like that where they're trying to do good things, but you can't take that as literal, literal testimony. It's just a research tool. And if you're trying to say this is evidence that they met E.T., well, maybe they remember it that way, but there's no guarantee that whatever they interacted with is E.T. No. Um, I think the thing is, though, if somebody has a traumatic um, encounter or traumatic episode in their life, um, in fact, aliens might be covering something realistic, uh, something else that might have happened, you know, a sort of near-death experience or something um, you know, more earthbound, and we're kind of covering it up with stories of aliens and things. Um, so, you know, and I think the problem is with things like um, lie detector tests, tests as well. If somebody firmly believes in something, um, you know, they might, you know, they'd pass a lie detector test, but that doesn't mean to say it's real. You know, perhaps if you ran a lie detector test on somebody who believes the earth is flat, um, would come out of it as being truthful, but that doesn't make the earth flat or global, does it? You know, so I think using hypnosis is a, a, another thing where it's um, you're just bringing in something um, as exotic as UFOs to to examine as a subject which is already quite cloudy, if you know what I mean. So, um, you know, I, I think we're just muddying the waters with hypnotic regression. I think as well, um, well, some people might welcome it, but I think some people like, um, I think with Charles Hickson and um, Calvin Parker, they, um, they were hypnotically regressed not long after their encounter. And they were too traumatized to go f- through uh, hypnosis and were terminated it quite quickly. So um, I think it, it's using human minds and emotion can be quite, uh, you know, it's quite quite powerful really. And so I think you've got to be more careful um, and not to be too keen on just collecting evidence. You know um, something interesting here, but, just as coincidental. Two weeks from now on the Paracast, we'll be featuring Calvin Parker. It's a book out published by Philip Mantle. And I think that leads us to questions we should be asking him, don't you think? Mm, I think, yeah, because he was hypnotically regressed by Bud Hopkins. And it's great that this book uh, that's just come out by Parker actually has a transcript of that uh, hypnotic regression. It'd be interesting to see... um, if he thinks it actually relates to um, some missing time episode he had, how how realistic it is, or whether it's just a kind of fantasy to uh, to fill the void, you know. And um, well, when when I was reading about it, I was just wondering that uh, um, he and Charles Hickson were very um, traumatized, and when they were interviewed by the sheriff's office. They obviously um, but, but didn't seem like people making up a story. They genu- genuinely seemed like they'd, they'd had some really um, powerful experience, whatever it was. And it, um, I was just wondering if it, it could have perhaps been triggered by something like um, ball lightning because they did see a blue light and something zipped through the sky and then um, an illumination coming from this large object. I just wondered if it's is ever considered any, you know, um, other explanations than it being a spaceship. Yeah, um, actually, you know, uh, we've got uh, Michael Persinger 
who he theorizes exactly that for some cases, oh, yeah. he, you know, in yeah. connection with the earth lights, which is you yeah. know, th- theorized to be uh, a lot of EM generated by uh, yeah. tectonic plate activity and so on could theoretically affect a person's mind. Yeah. Uh, so w- can you tell us more about what a fugue state is? Because I think some people have heard it, but we don't really understand it what actually happens to a person when they go into a fugue state uh one thing here we got about a minute before we break go ahead nigel okay yeah we'll just go into um i suppose some people have called it an altered state of reality so we could be cut off all the senses are kind of cut off and then things are going on in the mind and um uh, you know, so they're, they're um, dis- detached from reality. It's a bit like um, hypnagogic and hypnopompic hallucinations, which happen in the phases between going to sleep and waking up. Um, your brain doesn't acknowledge um, out- outside stimuli um, and makes up things. And so you can have quite realistic experiences of things, even though they're not physically there. They're kind of hallucination, I suppose. And um, um, Jenny Randalls has also called this a false factor, whereas people have seen UFOs would seem to go into a completely different zone of reality where you can't hear birds singing or everything seems to come to a stop. And so that the Oz factor might be something like um, a fugue state as well. I think there's quite a lot in you know psychological literature to kind of look up and perhaps relate to UFO type experiences. We got a lot more to talk about here: abductions and other things. Nigel Watson, Gene right. Steinberg, Jay uh, Randall Murphy. You're in the Paracast. <laughs> Thank you for listening to GCN. Be sure to visit GCNlive.com today. Attack of the Rockoids has been well received by critics and readers alike. It's a -a thrill-a-minute story you'll never forget. A former U.S. military intelligence officer is haunted by intense dreams about a beautiful woman pleading for his help after a terrible battle in outer space. But the dreams turn out to be true and thrust him into a telepathic love affair with a woman whose faraway planet is intent on destroying the Earth. And now the gripping tale continues in The Coming of the Protectors. It's the second book of the Rockoids trilogy, a galaxy-spanning adventure that pits our hapless heroes against powerful, fanatical enemies that threaten the lives of freedom-loving beings everywhere. Attack of the Rockoids and The Coming of the Protectors. Classic science fiction at its best. Available now. For more details, visit rockoids.com. That's R O C K O I D S dot com. It's been said any society is only three missed meals away from chaos. Those times may be near. Think about it. Our country faces multiple terrorist threats and aggressions from Russia and North Korea. Social unrest and violent marches yet again may lead to looting of stores and city shutdowns. And our crumbling infrastructure leaves our power grid vulnerable to long-term outages from a single cyber attack. When the chaos from any one of these threats arises, the government knows it can't provide during a widespread national emergency. That's why you need your own plan for self-reliance. That's where My Patriot Supply comes in. Get a four-week survival food supply for only $99. That includes breakfast, lunches, and dinners. Order online at preparewithgcn.com. 99 bucks for four weeks of survival food that tastes like homemade cooking and lasts up to 25 years from My Patriot Supply. Get your kits today at preparewithgcn.com. Free shipping is included. Preparewithgcn.com. Welcome back to the Paracast, the gold standard of paranormal radio. And now, here's Gene Steinberg. You know, ladies and gentlemen, when we do our breaks here, 
Normally, we go from segment to segment, and then we insert the ads and everything when we record these shows. This time, I took a 10-minute break to get some business done. And they had 10 minutes, ladies and gentlemen, to talk about me behind my back. <laughs> Isn't that amazing, that opportunity that was presenting itself? It's just spectacular. Anyway, we get back to UFO abductions, the flaws of regressive hypnosis. And you mentioned briefly, Nigel Watson, about the resemblance mm -hmm. between near-death experiences and abductions, which is something that we've talked about quite a while. How do you look at that? I think uh, quite a lot of different experiences can be uh, interpreted in a different way different um perspectives really you, you know ufos is something you know we're more keen on but obviously some people um might have a, a, a similar occur, uh, experience to an alien abduction but regard it as something um like an out-of-body experience or a, a very intense dream even you know i think um you know people have had sort of intense fantasies about these things but some you know i think in, in our literature it's the quite intense um recollections of something that we believe actually occurred and, that's really um, um, that's really interesting because it sounds if you can excuse me here just for backing up a bit that this is a lot again like the fugue state we were talking about just before mm -hmm. the break where we it, where it seems to be like a waking dream I've actually lost loss of memory and wake up, you know, um, could be they, um, they can function and then suddenly they can be missing for a week or something and then reappear and they, they don't know their name or anything. Um, you know, it's, it's like an episode of amnesia. And sometimes this occurs because people have been sort of victims of traumatic things like sexual abuse. And, um, you know, we can have quite a few traumatic episodes like that. And then we might enter a fugue state where your brain kind of literally kind of switches off, blocks off these, um, these traumas, and then people reappear. And sometimes, you know, these things can just happen for perhaps just a, a short period, but we can be quite uh, long as well. So, you know, this is something that, you know, I think the human mind is a lot more complex than some sort of alien abduction books um, state, really, because, you know, we're obviously most of them are, are from a sort of, um, you know, spaceship theories, whereas I think if you look into... Um, just as different psychological states, you notice that quite a lot of them, you know, can reflect what's in some of the literature as well. Um, but, you know, it's a notoriously difficult area to sort of uh, actually pin down what might be occurring with people. And I think that's why, like, John Keel years ago said, you know, you should discover what the witness had for breakfast. I don't think he meant that literally. Well, he might have <laughs> come to think of it because, <laughs> you know, some yeah. substances can alter your mind, you know, but... Sure. Um, the fact is you should be more aware of the overall context of a person and not just from the context of just their sighting. And I think that's interesting about Calvin Parker's new book, and you're going to speak to him soon, because um, it gives us the background to what happened to him. And it, it's quite intense what what did happen to him. Um, um, yeah, you were just talking and, about uh, how people can uh, go into these fugue states and actually wake up several days later and yes. so well, some this... people have even been have been missing for years and don't realize who they are it's a bit like jason bourne really where he has flashbacks to um his existence before he become part of the the, the sort of cia program so i suppose that takes us into a, a different area but you know people's I've said we've been sort of brainwashed or programmed by different nefarious agencies. You know, with the CIA and other um, US government agencies did intensively look at how to change people's perceptions using LSD and um, they even investigated, 
you know, um, remote viewing and all sorts of different things. And one person's even alleged that a lot of his classic abduction experiences were actually uh, simulations uh, that were um, conducted by um, uh, the United States to kind of um, test people. You know, there's quite a few intriguing possibilities about, you know, what, what does cause... Uh, um, uh, UFO experiences. Well, then, uh, and, so, uh, you know, it's not a simple thing. Something like the Travis Walton case. Then, I mean, that could have mm. eas- that can easily be attributed then to this sort of a fugue state, where yeah, you know, exactly, he he yeah, he gets yeah. out of the truck, he goes to in- investigate what seems to be some sort of anomalous light, which mm. a number of investigators have likened to a, a, a you know a nighttime uh, blind for hunting about that time yeah. of year and uh you know he yeah. he's he gets uh sort of disoriented by the lights falls bumps his head the truck takes off and so he's got this yeah. sort of bump on his head that sends him into a fugue state where yeah. all he remembers is being on an alien ship for a few days yeah i think that one again is uh, something where you, you might think even something i don't know what the weather conditions were like or anything but there again, something like uh, ball lightning might have even occurred, which caused a flash and might have emotion, you know, disturbed him so much that he entered a fugue state. And then a few days, it's not until a few days later, he's able to, he has no memory of what happened um, between, you know, that event and um, reappearing to society. And, and there again, I think it's hypnotic regression that might have had a big um factor in that and also there's been a big debate over whether he passed lie detector tests or anything like that but i think the thing about lie detector tests is, like i said before is that they're a bit of a red herring really and i think in a way travis a bit like calvin parker have um have te- kept to their story so i think they do actually believe th- these things happen to them but you know what what actually causes it? Um, you were saying about Michael Persinger's theory of, um, you know, tectonic strain and different, um, you know, these earthquake lights and plasmas, a bit like ball lightning, could actually cause people to, um, you know, hallucinate and have these alien experiences. A person, this was just, I think it was just actually last year that made the news, or back in February, something like that. Uh, because he was on a, a skiing trip, and uh, he turned up six days later with barely any memory of how he got there, and oh, yes. uh, a new iPhone and a haircut, and uh, uh-huh. it, you know it turned out that he'd had some sort of skiing accident and crawled in the back of someone's truck, and he he really didn't remember any of it until he, people helped him trace back what really happened. All right, so that, this that does happen. A bit like these. Yeah, um, it sounds also like you know these you, you read about in the fourteen literature people say they're being teleported. Where one minute they're in one city and then they turn up in another city, but there again it might be because something like that happened, and you know they they don't recall the journey. You know, um, I think sometimes you know if you drive at night, uh, I think, and you're tired, sometimes there you forget how parts of your journey because your mind kind of switches off and you think oh how did i get here i suddenly so before we progress i want to remind you about something that we haven't talked about too much on this episode and that is the paracast plus we'd love you to check it out we offer an ad-free version of this show we offer the after the paracast podcast you never know what's going to happen there in fact tim beckley is going to join us this week with randall and me and it's going to be an interesting kind of session. To learn more about the Paracast Plus, go to plus.theparacast.com. Once again, that's plus.theparacast.com. I don't want to say this. I can give you some interesting examples, but we have Gene and Nigel and Randall. You're in the Paracast. (laughs) Neighbors, we've made such a deal with HelloFresh, and it means that everyone listening to this show can receive $30 off your first week of deliveries when you go to HelloFresh.com and use the offer code PARACAST30. You know, with 
HelloFresh, you can choose the delivery day that works best for you. They've got a wide variety of chef-curated recipes that change weekly. And can you imagine me cooking Japanese panko chicken? It makes me feel like I'm a chef. It means also that you could actually get your meal cooked in 30 minutes. For busy people, this is perfect. The simple recipes include step-by-step instructions so even I can figure it out. Go to HelloFresh.com, use the offer code PARACAST30 to get $30 off your first week of deliveries. HelloFresh.com. Let's talk tough. Let's talk comfort. Let's talk about down-home value. Made in the USA blue jeans like you wore as a kid. Remember? There's a place down in Tennessee where they make blue diamond gusset jeans. They so pride in every stitch. Guarantee you love the way they fit. They put a diamond gusset in the crotch where you need it most. Blue diamond gussets got it. Others don't. For good old fashioned comfort, get diamond gusset jeans. Every stitch guaranteed. In our Defender motorcycle jean comes Kevlar reinforced. See them at GUSSET.com. That's gusset.com. Or call 888 848 7738. That's 888 848 7738. Diamond gusset jeans got it. Others don't. This is Fred. Uh, hi, I'm Fred. Fred's a repeater. I tend to repeat. Fred has a business. I do have a business. And a problem. Fred repeats the same tired advertising over and over, and now it doesn't work. Over and over. But Fred is about to see a vision. I'm seeing a vision. Advertising on the Genesis Communications Network is the smart way for Fred to reach his potential customers with the most affordable national advertising rates, period. Get started today with GCN, the Genesis Communications Network. Just email advertise at GCNlive.com. If you owe money to the IRS, you need to hear this. The IRS is cracking down on those who owe back taxes. It starts with a devastating letter. And if you don't act immediately, you could find yourself having your wages garnished or have a lien placed on your property. But there's a solution. Tax 10,000 can help. Avoid enforced compliance, where these holds on your income and seizure of your home could become a nightmare that just won't end. Call 800-239-9957 now and speak to one of our experts. 800-239-9957 is the number to link you directly to a tax resolution specialist who will negotiate with the IRS on your behalf. Working through the IRS Fresh Start program, all the forms will be handled for you. All you have to do is make the toll-free call, 800-239-9957. Find out if you qualify and possibly save yourself thousands of dollars, not to mention a lot of headaches. It could be the best call you've made today. That number again, 800-239-9957. The service does not provide tax settlement or legal services. We will refer you to a company that does provide such services. Often the IRS will not agree to any reduction in the amount owed. Not all taxpayers who owe more than $10,000 will qualify for a tax reduction program. Hunters, anglers, campers, and survivalists. Get back to nature. Expand your horizons with the highest quality, most versatile, unique slingshots and sling bows on the market at slingbow.com. Slingbow products are compact and models start from just $17.98. They're perfect for your bug out bag or storing in your vehicle. Give yourself and your loved ones the excitement and tradition of Slingbow. A new frontier in archery and truly modern twist on this primitive survival tool. Feel the thrill only at slingbow.com. We'd like to hear from you. If you have a comment or question about the Paracast, send it to news at theparacast.com. That's news at theparacast.com. And don't forget to visit our famous Paracast community forums at forum.theparacast.com. You notice Randall is refining the echo. It's just very gentle there. It's like, you know, Nigel, here's the thing when we listen to this. A lot of times people are so used to doing something every day, like traveling to work or something like that, or taking Mm -hmm. a journey in a car and you don't want to think people do this, but they do. We all do it. Mm -hmm. And that is we go somewhere and we get there and the trip is over. And probably we remember very little, if anything, about that trip. Now, we might be perfectly safe drivers. I assume most of us are. Maybe we're listening to the radio. Maybe we're talking to somebody on the telephone, hopefully hands-free, 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 <laughs> and where somebody's sitting next to you and you're having a discussion, it's relaxing and everything's going okay. But if you 
actually trying to remember what happened after you reach your destination. You can't. Mm. I, I do a, the same journey quite regularly, and you, you can't recall one journey from another one, really, unless something sort of weird happens or, you know, there's an accident or some, you know, sort of road diversion or something. But your mind just switches it off because there's no new stimulus. So you, it's just like, oh, well, there's nothing to see here. <laughs> so you just turn yourself off. And, uh, yeah, it is a bit frightening, really, because there's some things like, say, at work, you see certain things. But if you were had to write down what it says on, say, a notice board you see every day, you'd probably only get half of it right. I think the tune to what's important to us at the time and tunes out of it, you know, because I think there's this syndrome where people can remember everything, but because they remember everything in so much detail, we'd have to live another life to go through all those memories again. So, you know, normally our brains just filter out of a kind of trash and just brings to attention you know, what what we need at the time you know and uh, yeah yeah it's quite fascinating really about what happens to the human brain and i think psychology or psychiatry shows what happens when the mind is pushed to the edge or um is submitted to things like hallucinogenic drugs or um outside stimuli as well as things that might go on you know the biology of the brain and the makeup of the brain so I suppose it's the interface between external factors and your own biology as well, which, so, um, you know, this idea of fantasy-prone people are more likely perhaps to be witnesses to abductions of things because the, the mind's more conditioned to look at things in a more fantastic way. So there's elements of that really to look at. So what about channeling then? How, how does that sort of fit in there? Because those people seem to go into their own little world when they're doing that. I sort of met somebody years ago who I like went into a mediumistic trance and had a communication with Venusians, I think. I get the feeling she wasn't particularly into UFOs, so I think she kind of tuned herself into what she thought we might want to hear. A lot of channeling is a kind of seeking certain things or perhaps tuning into things um, either they want to find out or what other people want to hear, really. I don't know um, how legitimate it is, really. People have tried using all sorts of sort of um, techniques, like even using uh, Ouija boards to contact aliens. So I suppose the, the two areas do kind of merge. And I think a lot of the early contactees were more prone to indulging channeling and um, esoteric ways of trying to contact UFOs. But a lot of people have also just seen lights in the sky moving about and they felt that the light seemed to be tuned into their own brain and that, you know, if a flash of light at it, the UFO seemed to respond to them or if a move ahead, it seemed to move in conjunction with them or what they're thinking about. You know, there's quite a few areas where it merges into what you call sort of psychic and um, paranormal phenomenon. But there again, you know, it's, it's because of some exotic origin or causes or you know you can go the skeptical road and just think well these are things that are due to psychological factors you know so it's a no new area really as a psychologist though how realistic is it to think that all of these reports are of that nature i mean clearly you're taking a very level-headed approach and mm. you appear to be ruling out quite a bit of the possibilities and attributing it to possibly some sort of a psychological aberration, even if it's transient. As a yeah. ufologist, do you think that they can all be explained that way? Or do you think there is a real objective phenomenon, some sort of alien craft from, we're not sure where, but something um, real and objective? I think this is something where I've veered from belief to skepticism and, and back again because in a way you think well if it were aliens it would be clever enough to manipulate us the way you know john uh, keel wrote about years ago so in a way we could be playing with us and uh and 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 you know toying with us and the way we might you know play with animals or um 
um, things, you know, in laboratories, really. So, you know, I think there's this whole thing about Charles Fort who said, you know, we are property and that, you know, we are being experimented on or just play things of aliens. So I think that's something... Um, I think it's an in, it's an interesting concept, really. I think it's explored a lot in sort of um, in, in science fiction novels as well. But on the other hand, um, with say uh, a lot of UFO cases, uh, you think oh you can explain them all, and then you come across some. But every ufologist seems to have a case where they say, oh yeah, that's true, except in this instance of. You know, spoke to somebody and they had a certain amount of evidence. And, um, you know, that's what tips the balance from it just being perhaps a psychological thing to perhaps something else is going on. Perhaps it's something, you know, there might be some really simple explanations, often the most simplest of their uh, staring us in the face. But um, because we're also involved in the subject so much, perhaps. It's sometimes it's hard to see the facts beyond, you know, all the kind of theories that we have that surround us. So I'm sitting on the fence, basically, there. I think here's kind of where I draw the line on that. I can completely agree with everything we've talked about up until now. And mm-hmm. that's why I tend to sort of put abductions and that sort of thing kind of out there more in fringe ufology. When we get talking about UFOs, I start talking, I'm more of a nuts and bolts guy there. You know, are we talking about real craft or not? It's pretty difficult to just discount, say, when a radar station picks up a UFO and they send a jet after it and the pilot sees the object while it's Mm. being picked up on radar. To me, that seems to be a lot more concrete in terms of talking about the objectivity of the phenomenon. What do you think about that? Um, somebody has just written a book, I can't remember the name of it, is uh, just written about UFOs, but cut out all the alien abduction and exotic encounters and just looked at sightings by pilots, um, military and civilian pilots, radar cases, and you know, mass sightings of UFOs. More to come with Nigel. Yeah. Gene and Randall, you're in. The Paracast. <laughs> for listening to GCN. Visit GCNlive.com today. You've been hearing Dr. Wallach talking about 90 essential nutrients, keeping the body healthy. GCNteam.com now has Beyond Tangy Tangerine tablets, 60 plant-derived minerals, 16 vitamins, 12 amino acids, packed in a powerful tablet. But that's not it. 160,000 auric points, a knockout punch to free radicals, Call 877-878-4203 or go to GCNteam.com. That's 877-878-4203. This is Jessica Armand, founder of My Magic Mud. Our team helped organize a successful effort to remove fluoride from our city's water supply. This is our passion. My Magic Mud Oral Care purifies and brightens your smile naturally. GCN listeners, please support my family business by purchasing our products from your local health food store. We're also available at CVS Pharmacy. Or visit us at MyMagicMud.com and take 10% off now with coupon code GCN10. For USA Radio News, I'm Wendy King. Jurors didn't reach a verdict in the Paul Manafort financial fraud trial and were sent home for the weekend. In a revelation that stunned the courtroom, Judge T.S. Ellis said he has received threats while he's presided over the case and that he's now being protected by U.S. Marshals. When news organizations asked him to make jurors' names part of the public record, he declined for their safety. President Trump weighed in on his one-time campaign chairman's case. I think the whole Manafort trial is very sad. When you look at what's going on there, I think it's a very sad day for our country. Manafort is charged with 18 felony counts here and tax evasion in a separate case. He has steadfastly refused to cooperate with the probe into Russian meddling in the 2016 election. You're listening to USA Radio News. 
This is an urgent health notice for all residents suffering from back, neck, knee, and wrist pain. You may qualify for a pain-relieving brace at little or no cost to you, but the deadline is fast approaching. Simply call the Health Alert Hotline now. You heard right. You may qualify for a pain-relieving back, neck, knee, or wrist brace. These items may even be covered by Medicare or your private insurance. The Health Alert Hotline is your brace company. These specialized braces have been tested for pain relief. Call us toll-free right now to determine your eligibility and to learn how to use your private insurance or Medicare to minimize your out-of-pocket cost. Don't wait. If the deadline passes, you may lose your opportunity to get a pain-relieving back, neck, knee, or wrist brace at little or no cost to you. 800-296-1261. 800-296-1261. 800-296-1261. That's 800-296-1261. Policies issued by American General Life Insurance Company, Houston, Texas. Not available in all states. For details, visit AIGdirect.com. If you're young and healthy, you don't need life insurance, right? Yeah, that's what I used to think, too, until my brother died at 38. Joe left his wife with two kids, a mortgage, and a stack of bills she couldn't pay. Mary had to sell the house and move everybody into this tiny two-bedroom apartment just to make ends meet. I never want to do that to my wife, so I got life insurance. I called AIG Direct and was really surprised how affordable it is. Just $14 a month for $250,000 of term life coverage. Listen, if you have a family, you should seriously think about getting life insurance. You'll feel a lot better having it. Trust me. Call AIG Direct for a free no-obligation quote. The call takes less than five minutes, and you could save up to 70%. Call now, 1-800-910-7981. That's 1-800-910-7981. 1-800-910-7981. Hi, this is Nick Pope. You're listening to the Paracast. Subtle Echoes. The Sounds of Randall Murphy. Coming your way on the Paracast with Nigel Watson. And it's interesting here. There was an article in a magazine called Saucer News from Jim Mosley. Don't know if you ever heard of Jim Mosley. Yeah, I've heard of him. Sure. Yeah. And he had this before he went to Saucer Smear. He had the real magazine. And they did an article. This is, goes back to like the 50s or 60s. How close will Major Donald Kehoe allow a UFO to get? And the argument being that Mm. someone like him would accept all sorts of UFO cases, but as soon as they became close up or involved some sort of contact or abduction, they would not consider it just like this. And that's, I guess, the argument we had or the discussion we had early in the show, which is the very Mm. restrictive way UFOs are looked at. Or UFOs, you're using the the classic pronunciation, Mm. which I avoid because I'm not trying to sound like I'm too much in the field even though I've been here for 60 years or something. But (laughs) we're actually 80, but I don't want to admit I'm 300 years old because they'll think I'm an old vampire and I drink (laughs) true blood to keep going. But the thing is here is there you have, and a MUFON is similar to that, even though they do accept abductions, which is to put Mm -hmm. UFOs in a very, very limited framework. You allow a few... External things. I guess they allow secret space programs too now because of what they did a couple of years ago. And what that does is we possibly all agree here is ignore so much of what's going on, which is upsetting. I have a question here though about some of these abductions and it's based on an appearance by Denise Stoner and Kathleen Marden on the Paracast several years ago. And Uh, they co-authored a book where Denise says, she met somebody while being abducted, I guess befriended her, and then after the abduction's over, actually looked her up and she was there. So we have a shared experience with two real people in different parts of the United States who had yeah. the same experience. What's up with that? I think that, you know, something like that would be, you know, it's pretty hard to explain. I think the old abduction thing, like you say, though, is it, it opens up a no new can of worms, really. I suppose that's why I kind of got into being interested in psychology. But obviously, psychology doesn't always have um, all the answers either. And I think the problem is because people report these things, they tend to be regarded as cranks. People ignore them when really they could be opening up new areas of knowledge, really, and to see, you know, because a lot of 
people who have alien abductions aren't necessarily traumatised enough to have to consult uh, the medical profession. They're kind of left to their own devices. I think a lot of um, support groups were set up in the 80s and um, and have continued since or on Facebook. And um, w- w- something like where you know, people have said they've seen other people on board um, the spaceship or whatever it is, and for them to have actually... That, that seems to seem like, um, yeah, they were actually... Uh, on some sort of um, spaceship. But if you look at something like the books by um, Bud Hopkins and David Jacobs, a lot of the um, activities by the aliens seems like magic. People are um, transported on beams of light, they're, they're passed through windows or walls, they suddenly appear inside the craft without knowing they've gone through any sort of doorway. So in a way, they've been able to pass through solid matter. And also the aliens sort of communicate with them through telepathy, which is, an you know, another thing that um, doesn't ex- exist in terms of our current technology or science. So uh, a lot of the things that the aliens are doing is quite sort of magical as much as being technological as well. And I think, well, it's very hard also to separate between the nuts and bolts, you know, the Donald Kehoe attitude of, like, people were happy when UFOs might just have been, like, robot ships or anything. But I think um, magazines like Flying Saucer Review and people like John Kill started reporting, you know, more and more cases of aliens coming out of landed UFOs. And so... Bit by bit, um, these what were originally regarded as survey ships, or remote controlled ones, like that have become populated by all sorts of um, strange creatures, from humanoids down to uh, you know robots and uh, all manner of um, beings. I think the only thing is, uh, even if you keep to the um, nuts and bolts, it does sort of leak into. Um, areas of um, you know, alien abduction, really. I think it's hard, like to say, you know, where is a cutoff point where Donald Keel wouldn't have stepped any further? You know, it's. I think that's probably what's happened to me. I've passed on to other, other areas beyond the nuts and bolts. I don't know whether that's a good thing or not. I think it's quite good to have people who are just grounded in... Um, you know, finding technical proof, but you know, there's no area beyond that. I think maybe the the book you were thinking of is Leslie Keen's book, UFOs, Generals, Pilots, and Government Go on Record. Uh, yeah. Now, this is a bit of a long lead up into this question here, but uh, <laughs> in a October 26, 2017 article on the online publication Unilad, you used a quote by Christopher Mellon from a May 9th, 2016 interview posted by Leslie Keene in the Huffington Post, in which Mellon says, I highly doubt the DOD or any other government agency is concealing UFO information. I participated in a comprehensive review of DOD's black programs and spent over a decade conducting oversight of the National Foreign Intelligence Program and almost totally separate world of secrets. I visited Area 51 and other military intelligence and research facilities. During all those years, I never detected the faintest hint of government interest or involvement in UFOs. Then only Mm -hmm. about a year later, he's getting himself involved with the To the Stars Academy and Mm -hmm. Luis Elizondo. (laughs) Uh, So uh, you've probably followed some of that. So do you care to comment on, on any of that? to the stars and, uh, yeah, you know. uh, um, I, I think the problem with the two, to the stars Academy is, is just a bit too glitzy for my liking. And also it's headed by it, it's sort of celebrity ufology and the, you know, this whole thing about them. We kind of like the, the, the presented a bit of evidence, but it's always like the promise of more ed- evidence and future. It's quite frustrating. It's so disclosure movement which has been going on for for decades now and it's always like there'll be you know one 
definite, you know, proof that the government is involved. But, you know, governments have been involved in lots of UFO research. There's no denying that. But the problem is, have they actually come up with any evidence that's something else entirely? Um, I think Kevin Randall on on his, um, in a recent blog, has said that the, um, you know, some military officers said we wish that they had evidence of um, a crash flying saucer a year after Roswell, which he kind of show like that it's evidence that Roswell didn't occur. But the problem is um, there are so many different government agencies and the um, uh, act that might be acting without the knowledge of other ones, really. So uh, I suppose nobody as a total overview of, of of what might be going on. And, um, you know, something like the UFO evidence, I think it's very hard to track down. I think, you know, with the Stars Academy, it's like it's, it's um, just promising things that people want to hear. But uh, I think it's still got a long way to go, really. And um, also there's a kind of um, thing that, you know, UFOs are just an American phenomenon, whereas it's been a worldwide phenomenon. And that, um, you know, things have gone on in other countries. Hey, guys, we got to do our break now. We got more to come with Nigel Watson and Gene and Randall. What kind of echo will Randall produce? You're in the Paracast. Thank you for listening to GCN. Visit GCNlive.com today. Do you need a website? Well, you can get a great deal on hosting services with Namecheap's legendary coupon code. They're offering substantial hosting discounts on shared hosting, business hosting, VPS hosting, reseller hosting, and even dedicated servers. Namecheap is preferred by millions. It's backed by a money-back guarantee. Use the coupon code LEGENDARY to cash in on the special deal at Namecheap.com, Namecheap.com. First came Attack of the Rockoids, and it was a critically acclaimed success. And now there is the coming of the Protectors. A former military intelligence man is contacted by a space woman in a dream, a dream that turns out to be a nightmare because evil forces on our distant planet are planning to conquer the Earth. This is gripping science fiction of the classic kind. Attack of the Rockoids and the coming of the Protectors. Find out more at Rockoids.com. That's Rockoids, R-O-C-K-O-I-D-S, dot com. Do the letters IRS give you anxiety? I'm Dan Pilla. I've defended people from the IRS for more than 40 years. My book, How to Get Tax Amnesty, created the tax resolution industry and is responsible for helping hundreds of thousands of people. It can help you, too. If you're a non-filer or facing IRS enforcement right now, your case is unique. You need real help, not cookie-cutter advice. My clients get my personal attention. Buy my book at danpilla.com and get a free consultation directly with me. That's danpilla.com. Let's start solving your tax problem right now. Homemakers. Groceries by mail ships free. Try our amazing bacon. It stores in your pantry. No refrigeration required. Our value-added packaging provides a 10-year shelf life and protects the leanest, thickest, center-cut, fully-cooked bacon in America today. Ready to eat right from the pouch or warm and serve. Always price less than grocery for your everyday use. Savory and delicious. Order today at readytoeatbacon.com. Readytoeatbacon.com. No matter how large or small your digging project may be, no matter how urban or rural, you must always call 811 before any digging project. 811 is our national one-call number, alerting your local utility companies to come out and mark any lines they have near your dig site. So before you do this or this, make sure you do this. For digging projects big or small, make the call to 811. Brought to you by Common Ground Alliance. Long distance travel or long hours in front of a computer can take its toll on your body. 
Get relief for your neck or back pain when you search Amazon for sunshine pillows, heating wraps, and pads, often listed as an Amazon choice. Why take another pill? Now, from Sunny Bay and by customer demand, we introduce our extra long neck heating wrap, a complete wrap, wide and hands free, and brings fast relief to those who suffer from neck or back pain. You can easily find sunshine pillows on Amazon. Or search Amazon for our new Sunny Bay disposable heat pads. Or look for Sunny Bay heated neck wraps for relief from back pain to menstrual pain and cramps. Sometimes life can be a pain in the neck or back or shoulder. See why our company, Biomed DB Design, has a lifetime 100% positive rating on both Amazon and Etsy. Just go to Amazon.com and search Sunny Bay or call us 253-678-1361. Standing up for what's right. Helping out when things go wrong, seeking the truth, and speaking our minds. Not just making records, but breaking them. Leading the way behind the camera, beyond the runway, and on the silver screen. Not just making our mark, but making a difference. Now that's a job for a Girl Scout. Girl Scouts, preparing girls for a lifetime of leadership. Hi, it's Grant Cameron from PresidentialUFO.com. You're listening to the Paracast, the gold standard of paranormal radio. I was thinking here he should try his Alvin of the Chipmunks voice next. (laughs) Okay, Uh, Nigel, let's progress. I'm sorry I interrupted you with the previous segment. Go ahead, please. Okay. Yeah, we were just finishing up about the To the Stars Academy and how something... Or someone like uh, Chris Mellon, who, being as well placed in the Defense Department, had no idea that this program was going on, and then less than a year later, it finds out about it and gets himself placed into the Stars Academy and uh, mm. is writing articles in the New York Times and and talking all about it. Yeah, it's um, like in in Britain was the um, Project Condigan, which. Uh, was a secret document that very few people knew about and got released a few years later. And that seemed to look at a kind of overview of a subject and whether it would be something that the Ministry of Defence should um, carry on sort of collecting evidence for. I think we kind of used it as a way of wiggling out of a subject in the same way Project Blue Book was a way for the United States Air Force to wriggle out of um, investigating UFO cases after that study. And I think even somebody like Nick Pope um, wasn't particularly, uh, wasn't involved with producing that project um, Condigan report, although he, he, I think he might have been aware of it, but because he'd signed the Official Secrets Act, he couldn't, uh, he, he wasn't able to say anything about it until um, it, it was made uh, public. So um, I think this is a, a sort of problem where um, different departments can write reports and make studies without you know, people in very close even close proximity might be aware of or not allowed to speak about. Um, I think the other thing about disclosure and um, presenting stuff to the public is is almost another separate area to alien abductions or nuts and bolts ufology, really. I think what, from my point of view, um, the so fight to find things from government, so is sort of like it takes the energy away from people actually investigating UFO reports and talking to UFO witnesses instead, you know, of the time spent sending off for freedom of information requests and trying to track down evidence whether it exists or not. It's so it's really, um, uh, a topic nowadays that when during the US presidential campaigns, um, people are voting for the president that might most likely reveal the full truth about UFOs. Uh, I suppose Hillary Clinton was uh, very much trying to promote that idea in her campaign, but um, 
I think the problem is it uh, kind of gets swept under the carpet and other things happen when the president does get into power. And then either there isn't any UFO evidence hidden away in the votes or, um, you know, it's it's so secret we're never going to hear about it. Well, um, then we've got... Uh, I think, We've got guys Sorry. like uh, John. No, that's fine. I think that sums it up pretty well. Uh, you know, we also had people like John Alexander saying the same thing as Mellon that mm. you know he'd looked mm. all around, wandered all the halls, and tried to find the yeah. offices and the places where this was going on, and found nothing. And yet we know yeah. now that there was a program. So uh, it's yeah. indisputable. So it, it's yeah. <laughs> It's kind of ridiculous because, um, you know, the United States Air Force or the British government, if you, uh, if you wrote to the RAF or whatever it is, they all say, oh, we don't investigate these things. But I think if something significant happened, we, we would be forced to investigate it. And I'm sure there must, if there's, say, people were seeing lights in the sky in a certain area and military authorities were involved, we would eventually... After, there would be files about it. In fact, in the First World War, um, uh, there were so many sightings of odd things in the sky that people thought were German aircraft or whatever. But reports were collected by the local police and then sent to um, MI5 in London. So we had an old department looking at all these sighting reports. And you could say it was the first um, sort of X-Files department. And that was back in 1915. So, um, you know, governments, um, you know, we tend to say uh, we only look into these subjects if there's any sort of defence threat. But I think, you know, I think we've got to keep... You know, if there's um, a big public interest in the subject or if there's a sudden wave of sightings like Washington in 1952, we kind of, you know, we've got to do something about it. So I think we've, I think for them just to sort of try and sweep it under the carpet is, uh, is something, you know, it's impossible for them to do, really. It's not reasonable. It's not for a us. sensible idea. Yeah, it's not reasonable for us to think that they didn't do or wouldn't do anything. We know that they scrambled jets after the ones in the 52 incident several times. Yeah. Um, yeah. I find this uh, idea of UFOs during the First World War to be really quite interesting. And um, can you tell us a couple of cases from back then? Have you got any handy that you can share? Well, it was a particularly good one. Um, there was a sort of Zeppelin raid and one aircraft was sent up to look at um, a light in the sky and then um, he kind of, I think he lost track of it and then somebody else also saw it and he, he kind of um, described it as like a railway carriage with lights in the window and he actually took a pot shot at it with his sort of revolver and um, nobody pinned down, you know, what, what that was because I don't think it was... Um, explained as a zeppelin because it wasn't part of the group of zeppelins that had been attacking that particular night and that's a particularly interesting one because um it echoes the image on the cover of my book which has got the red baron shooting a ufo down um you know that was a kind of made up story um through the weekly world news and uh you know notorious for making up such stories but i think just that image of uh, a sort of um, First World War aircraft shooting at a flying saucer is quite a strong one. And, uh, you know, in that story, the Red Baron was said to have shot down this UFO and then two aliens got out of it and ran into the woods. But um, unfortunately, it's a sort of made-up <laughs> story. And obviously, yeah. <laughs> it would be, it'd be a bit sad if... Um, You've got this really great spaceship. You've travelled, you know, under the light years, and you finally turn up to be shot down by some old rickety aircraft. <laughs> it? It's a rather, a rather sad end. But um, with a British case, it was a bit like that. Work, but you know, this pilot took a pot shot of at something he saw in the sky, and um, so. You know, and that was kind of all reported in government documents. And I live near to Dartmoor, 
and there again lights were seen over the moors and people thought German spies were signalling to Zeppelins to, so that we could zero in on, on Plymouth or, or any other military targets in the area. So um, I think there's always been a kind of military interest in these things. And obviously in America, there have been lots of sightings in uh, military sensitive areas, you know, Roswell itself and um, White Sands Proving Grounds and places like that have been rife with like UFO sightings and rumours. So, yeah, I have to think government hasn't got an interest. It's just, uh, you know, it's quite, I, I think, uh, I think in um, Calvin Parker's book, he mentioned there's a few letters denying these documents exist, and then suddenly they get the, these documents. I think it was written transcripts or something at the Air Force base that happened a few days after their abduction. And I think at first the authorities denied that they had any more than verbal communications, and then I think the documents did turn up. So um, sometimes I think... Um, you know, there are cover-ups either deliberately to hide, say, government secrets or activities or not to scare the public about things that might might be going on, or it might be just that people aren't aware that, you know, these things have happened. So we can somebody like Nick Pope could easily say when he was uh, on the MOD desk, oh, we have no knowledge of this. But that might be because his department doesn't have that knowledge. Yeah, some, but, you know, think of it this way with Nick Pope, though. If he has signed a security agreement, non-disclosure in a sense, he couldn't tell you if he had that knowledge or not. He wouldn't be allowed to say it. We've got Nigel Watson. We've got yeah. Jay Randall yeah. Murphy. We've got Gene Steinberg. You're in. The Paracast. <laughs> are listening to GCN. Visit GCNlive.com today. We also have swag. You know, we have all these exclusive Paracast things that you can buy. We've got like, I guess, 60 or so different items and entails T-shirts, sleeves for notebook computers, iPad cases, mouse pads, the Paracast jumbo tote bag, all sorts of T-shirts and jackets and stuff like that for men and women. We have a Paracast aluminum water bottle. All this stuff, you go to store.theparacast.com, store.theparacast.com. What makes it special is that the items are the best quality, you know, great T-shirts, fabrics, and they have our official logo on them. That's what makes them special in multiple sizes and colors. We even have stuff for children. Stuff for women, stuff for men. We have all sorts of sizes, like small up to X large. A lot of good stuff. That's the swag from the Paracast. If you go to store.theparacast.com, stop by and take a shopping tour. Have you checked your Google search results lately? Search results are usually the first impression that people form of you or your business. So make sure that they create a positive impression with ReputationDefender.com. What the Internet says about you can have a big impact on your life and your livelihood, even if it's not true. Fortunately, you can now control how you look online and in online search results with ReputationDefender.com. Call 800-831-0771 now. That's 800-831-0771 for your free reputation analysis. If you have negative material from an ex-employee, upset patient, or former client, newspaper article, legal issue, social media, or other source showing up in your search results, you can combat it with ReputationDefender.com. Our dedicated experts in patented technology can help make your online search results look their best. Call 800-831-0771 to learn more. 800-831-0771. That's 800-831-0771. Or visit ReputationDefender.com. Welcome back to the Paracast, the gold standard of paranormal radio. And now, here's Gene Steinberg. Okay, folks, we continue with Nigel Watson. We're having a really fascinating session here. I'm just going to sit back and listen to him. And Randall, go ahead, please. Thanks for sharing the stories from the First World War there. Uh, 
For those who aren't as familiar with aviation as uh, as we might be, uh, when you were saying that uh, the pilot uh, took a pot shot at the UFO with his revolver, we have to remember that in those days, we're talking about aircraft with open cockpits, and they didn't even carry guns with them for quite a few years in the onset of aviation Mm -hmm. it was only finally somebody was ordered to take up a pistol and then they would literally fly by each other and and take shots at each other with revolvers so it's actually it's kind of humorous to think about in a way um they did fit machine guns eventually, but I think they could be as dangerous to their own yeah, they, <laughs> craft as they could be to the enemy. Yeah, the uh, first few shot their own propellers off until they figured yeah, out how, actually, uh, how to time them with, spe- the, uh, with the engine. Yeah, speaking about that, though, um, it reminds me of something I, I, I recently um, I mentioned it in my book, and I've also written it up for 14 times, that there was something that the... The British pilots called um, flaming onions, and they were like a string of lights that flew into the the air towards them. And they they thought these lights were connected by a chain, so that if it hit them, the chain would wrap around their aircraft and make them crash. Quite a lot of these pilots reported seeing them, and some even described them moving in quite intricate flight patterns and everything. But um, uh, none of them actually did any damage to the craft. And they just remind me of the Foo Fighters of the Second World War. So, you know, nothing's new even in ufology. <laughs> you know, it's, um, it, it just, it's the names that change, really, rather than the the things themselves. You know, and it, it's, it's, I suppose, in a way, it's... Giving the umbrella title of flying saucer or UFO means that you can actually investigate lots of things that are just strange in the sky. And without that umbrella term or concept, people just thought, oh, that's that's interesting or, you know, that's weird. And that, that was it, really. It didn't really cause much further investigation. Um, and I think in the case of the Flaming Onions, but I think we did look into it, but because it didn't um, actually cause any uh, harm to the aircraft, they kind of uh, just put it on, you know, we just thought, oh, that's a bit weird. We don't know what it was. Um, and there was a few anti-aircraft um, weapons that might have also caused this sort of thing. It might have just been an op- because of a rapid rate of fire, it might have caused the optical illusion of these uh, balls of light being attached by a chain or something. So, you know, so, you know, I think it's, you know, just looking back into historical records and things, it's surprising what you can turn up. Um, author William Bramley, he wrote a book called Gods of Eden. And in that book, he he was trying to find sort of a common denominator amongst all of the strife in the world and and wars and so on. And surprisingly to him, he says, it led him into the whole UFO topic because it oh, goes right. back as far as history uh, is recorded. Uh, I mean, there's you know tales of ancient conquests by Alexander the Great described three mm-hmm. instances between 329 and 337 BC when he and his army mm-hmm. encountered flying and what they call them flying silver shields. So it seems like there there is this connection between human war and UFOs, no doubt about it. Yeah. I think when there was a fear of Napoleonic um, invasions, people thought they saw um, balloons, you know, lights in the sky, which were attributed to being sort of um, French balloons. In the sort of 1890s in in Germany, and there was um, there were sightings of sort of strange lights and um, aircraft, which were seen sort of during border tensions in Poland. So I think wherever there's a, a battle or um, great tension, if, if something strange is seen, it's interpreted in terms of, you know, the en- enemy secret weapons, you know, just as Foo Fighters were um, thought of as German weapons, but obviously um, 
you know, that, that was something was, which is something we haven't really pinned down to anything. Ever again, ball lightning has been another explanation for some of them, but there are some quite um, intriguing reports there uh, of sort of which seem to be like intelligently compo- um, controlled balls of light. And, yeah, they're and very they're much, again, uh, yeah. They're very, yeah, the intelligent controlled. Uh, balls of light or glowing orbs, those were of the type that were seen during the 52 uh, case we were talking oh, yeah. about earlier. Yeah. And in one yeah. instance, those actually surrounded one of the jets that had been sent to intercept them. And the pilot uh, saw those lights at the same time as they were being tracked on two separate radars. Uh, so yeah. there's pretty much no doubt there that there was some objective reality to it. And then Mm -hmm. the pilot didn't know what to do at that point and asked for permission to fire on them or at least clarification Mm -hmm. is what to do. And uh, then the lights just zoomed off almost instantly away and out of, out of range and were gone. Mm -hmm. So it's pretty tough to think that there was any sort of hallucinating going on or that they were just simply random natural yeah. Objects that well, were floating around. Yeah, because things like ball lightning can be, you know, virtually yeah, lethal to human beings uh, in some cases. And yeah, other cases of there's even been a good story of one entering an aircraft, um, going into an aircraft and going down the aisle of a passenger aircraft and flying out again without causing any harm. And there. You know, it's going through solid matter, just like an abductee does in one of these, um, you know, Bud Hopkins' reports. So, um, you know, ball lightning is breaking the rules of science. And, and when you think about it, perhaps there could be even more exotic forms of, um, you know, energy or something that can occur um, on rare occasions and cause this sort of phenomenon. And also perhaps, you know, I've, I've, I've been reading something where somebody even speculates that ball lightning itself rather than just being a physical thing could be a, some sort of living entity that might just exist for a fraction of time. And, uh, you know, that that relates to um, stories, I think it was Tre- Trevor Constable who believed that um, UFOs were living entities that lived in the atmosphere. And um, Right, they live know, in the sky. Like that. that was one of Trevor James Constable's books. Yeah, yeah. They took these infrared pictures of them um, moving in the sky. So um, perhaps... You know, perhaps his, his theories haven't been sort of followed as much as um, the ET theories or anything, but, uh, you know, there could be more into it than, uh, than you think. And, you know, I, I suppose um, there, there's no new areas, really, that you could study in terms of UFO data, really, and to see where it takes you. Um, but um, I think the thing with... Um, Ball lightning in itself is quite a, an extreme phenomenon. It might be why people have reported them in, you know, as being ghostly like things that have been seen in cemeteries and, you know, regarded as being something connected to the supernatural as well as like we attribute it to UFO activity or something. We're going to attribute lots and lots of things as we progress and as we see what kind of echo effect. Jay Randall Murphy can produce for us. I'm Gene Steinberg. Our guest this week is Nigel Watson. What that means is you're in the Paracast. Attack of the Rockoids has been well received by critics and readers alike. It's a thrill a minute story you'll never forget. A former U.S. military intelligence officer is haunted by intense dreams about a beautiful woman pleading for his help after a terrible battle in outer space. But the dreams turn out to be true and thrust him into a telepathic love affair with a woman whose faraway planet is intent on destroying the Earth. And now the gripping tale continues in The Coming of the Protectors. 
It's the second book of the Rockoids trilogy, a galaxy-spanning adventure that pits our hapless heroes against powerful, fanatical enemies that threaten the lives of freedom-loving beings everywhere. Attack of the Rockoids and The Coming of the Protectors, classic science fiction at its best, available now. For more details, visit rockoids.com. That's R-O-C-K-O-I-D-S dot com. You haven't experienced yogurt until you've tried a Mossy, embodying health and flavor in a true whole milk, green-fed dairy beverage. Every sip pays homage to our old world cows and the ancient culturing methods their milk benefits from. With over 30 probiotics, a Mossy's undeniably nutritious, refined, cultured sensation bolsters your health and awakens your passion for dairy. A Mossy's so good, and you need to try it. Contact your Longevity distributor or call 877-878-4203 or go to GCNteam.com. Are you retired or facing retirement and you're afraid your income is going to be less than you'd like? I'm Pharmacist Keith. Dr. Wallach, the Dead Doctors Don't Lie guy, and I want to show you a low-cost way to create your own business, working around your current schedule, creating extra income that will last for years to come by joining Dr. Wallach's crusade, spreading his message of better health. To learn more, visit radio.recordedvideo.com. That's radio.recordedvideo.com, radio.recordedvideo.com, or call 866-257-3105 for a recorded message. Bacon lovers, we ship free. Try our amazing bacon. No refrigeration required. Proprietary value-added packaging provides 10-year shelf life and protects the leanest, thickest, center-cut, fully-cooked bacon in America today. Ready to eat right from the pouch or warm and serve. Savory and delicious. Wholesale price for your everyday use. Order today at readytoeatbacon.com. Readytoeatbacon.com. Hello, I'm Mike Lindell, the inventor of my pillow, and like all of you out there, I had problems sleeping. Pillows would go flat, I would flip-flop all night long, I would wake up with a sore neck, maybe a headache, or feel like I needed a nap even though I slept eight hours. When I invented my pillow, I wanted it to where you can move the patented fill to give you the exact support you need as an individual, regardless of sleep position. My pillow will get you into that deep REM sleep faster and you will stay there longer. It's not about how much time we spend in bed, it's about how much of that quality sleep we get. I do all of my own manufacturing right here in the United States. I have a 10-year warranty. You can wash and dry my pillow, and I give you a 60-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to lose. And here's my best offer ever. You can buy one of my pillows and get one absolutely free. Go to MyPillow.com or call 800-870-0305 and use promo code GCN. That's MyPillow.com or 800-870-0305 with promo code GCN. This is Jessica Armand, creator of the fluoride-free oral care brand, My Magic Mud. You're going to love our new products. Our cutting-edge oral rinses deeply soothe your mouth and fight cavities naturally. Our breath spray, My Magic Mist, will invigorate your senses with essential oils of peppermint and eucalyptus. Our clinically proven toothpaste and tooth powders whiten your teeth and detoxify your mouth. Buy discounted bundles direct at MyMagicMud.com and take 10% off with coupon code GCN10. MyMagicMud.com. We'd like to hear from you. If you have a comment or question about the Paracast, send it to news at theparacast.com. That's news at theparacast.com. And don't forget to visit our famous Paracast community forums at forum.theparacast.com. He sounds there like the creature, or actually the character who tried to play a creature in the movie The Princess Bride. And you had to have seen The Princess Bride to have any inkling of what I'm talking about uh, there. But so there's a scene. To trapped in a cave. <laughs> oh, wow. There we go. You know, we have so many things to talk about, and we're kind of focusing on a narrower area. But I wanted to drop a couple of things that came to us. Maybe we can go catch as catch can here for the remaining three segments or so. The Unexplained Rapid Reads ebooks that you wrote. Oh, yeah. Okay, I want to ask you a couple of these things, okay? And we can talk about it. Early on in the history of the PowerCast, like 2006, I can't remember 2006, we talked about spontaneous human combustion. You wrote a small ebook about it. What yeah. can we say? Well, I think this is a very rare phenomenon that seems to um, 
uh, it's an intense fire that can consumes um, can consume virtually the whole of a human body, but leave very few traces of an intense fire near the body. So somebody can be sort of burnt to death, but the chair they're sitting on is still in one piece. And you'd think with such an intense fire that the um, the whole house would burn down around them. And um, these reports go back quite a few years as well, so they're not just a modern phenomenon. And they, um, you know, sometimes people are are fully burnt, but perhaps just a a leg left behind that wasn't burnt up. And um, there are quite a few theories around this. Um, Often we think the majority of the cases seem to occur indoors. But I think there was a case recently in Germany where it seemed to happen to somebody on a park bench. But normally they seem to be indoors. Um, Usually they're um, they occur to people who live on their own, and um, some people have said that they, a, a high proportion of the victims have been alcoholics. So, um, uh, uh, but you know, uh, or, you know, perhaps their body's a bit more liable to burn if we get near the half or something. But even so, I think a, a lot of the cases are really difficult to explain. You know, to have that intensity of heat. Um, there have been a few theories like that. For perhaps um, people slowly, you know, like if they leave a cigarette end or something, and they, but might it might drop on their clothing, and then the, the fire might burn for quite a while until it it intensifies to such a degree that it will destroy the the, the, the human body. But um, it just seems like a lot of these, um, you know, and also the victim might be because they drink heavily, would be in such a sort of drunken state that they might not initially notice this. Basically, but then, this is a tragic accident. Well, I don't know, though, because with such intensity of flame and also the fact that the victims never seem to move, move it seems to imply more that it happens quite suddenly rather than it being a slow process um and perhaps you know there again it might be something down to something like ball lightning which i seem to be obsessed with tonight but uh, you know um that, that could be something that perhaps might trigger something like that because it's very intense uh, electricity or plasma but i think people have tried to explain it and have done a few different experiments with trying to burn the corpses of um pigs and things like that to see if it can reproduce these effects but um you know i think some have been um, genuine accidents and the, you know perhaps a newspaper reporters uh, exaggerated the facts some of the facts and things and make it sound it make, that makes it sound more mysterious you know like some of these that suddenly burnt to death or something when really um you know it has more uh, you know that we were near an electric fire or something. But even so, there's still this handful of cases that just seems to indicate, you know, explain what what's going on. So with this uh, phenomena here, this could be kind of related. Uh, you contributed a chapter to Timothy Green Beckley's book, UFO Hostilities and the Evil oh, Agenda, yeah. which uh, oh, yeah. says UFOs have been associated with a number of deaths, including Hollywood stars. Uh, uh, so, yeah. can you tell us a bit about that? I think that one's a case of um, um, somebody who, who uh, I think it's Caroline Lombard, who's a film actress, who um, she was in an aircraft that crashed, and I think uh, a UFO or lights were seen in the vicinity. So, kind of, they were attributed to perhaps causing the aircraft to crash, and. Um, yeah, I think, um, however true the, the, the sightings were, or anything, I think it's a good possibility that whether you know it was spaceships or ball lightning or whatever, I wouldn't be surprised if things like that have caused um, quite a few air, aviation accidents and probably um, highway accidents where people have probably been, you know, looking at a strange light in the sky. 
and um, you know crashed uh, and killed themselves. It's not the sort of thing. Uh, if that happens, so you might not, you know, never know why they crashed. But that, you know, that's something that could easily happen because. Um, Many years ago, I was on holiday in Warminster, and we saw a light over the fields, uh, which turned out to be a sort of a, a advertising blimp. But we didn't know that at the time. And the, the car driver just stopped the car on a bend. We all got out to have a look, but we could have easily have... Yeah, and quite a few cars stopped behind us, but we could have, you know, a traffic jam in the middle of the night on a small country road, you know, could have caught, you know, could have had tragic consequences. So I think, um, you know, UFOs by default can cause, could, you know, could cause um, quite bad accidents and things. Um, and then, of course, there's been cases of people being sort of zapped by UFO beams. Um, which seems to occur more in um, South America, really. And, you know, I think often of a case that's for most distance, I would sound more convincing because you know less about it. And, uh, but, but, you know, it's quite um, quite interesting, though, this whole area of UFO hostility because it links with, you know, UFO seen near military bases as well. You know, so, um, uh, you know, I, I think um, it's one of those areas where, um, you know, you, you segue into f- things like cattle mutilation cases and I think in UFO hostility, Hostilities is a chapter on, you know, possible human mutilations as well and death by UFO. Let's right. do so our maybe, break uh, here because last week we did talk about cattle mutilations and maybe we can get your slant on that. We have Nigel Watson, we have Gene Steinberg, we have Jay Randall Murphy and his Echo Machine. Machine, machine. You're in the Paracast. <laughs> for listening to GCN. Be sure to visit GCNlive.com today. I'm David Hall, founder of Diamond Gusset, where we're proud of our 100% grown and sewn American-made jeans. Whether you're out for dinner, working on the farm, or on the road, Diamond Gusset Jeans offers a full spectrum of styles and sizes for any occasion. To find yours, visit gusset.com. That's G-U-S-S-E-T.com. Our loyal customers enable us to continue sponsoring Liberty Media outlets like the one you're listening to. In Liberty, David Hall, Diamond Gusset Jean Company. Pro Pure Gravity Water Filters. Most tested, most trusted. The Pro One G2.0 All in One Filter by Pro Pure removes and reduces up to 200 plus contaminants, including fluoride, lead, and more. There's no priming required, no add on filter needed for fluoride reduction, and it's totally reusable. There's a size to fit most competitive brands of gravity water filter systems. Pro Pure Water Filters. When you don't know what's in your water, visit an authorized Pro Pure dealer or ProPureUSA.com. USA Radio News with Chris Barnes. British authorities are charging the man who allegedly drove his car into a crowd outside Parliament last Tuesday with attempted murder. The 29-year-old British citizen born in Sudan charged with driving the vehicle into a group of bicyclists, pedestrians, and police officers before crashing it into security barriers. Three people injured. Police say the case is being treated as a terrorist attack. However, the man's not been charged with any specific terror-related crimes. During a public appearance in Sacramento a few days ago, protesters shouted down Republican House Majority Leader Kevin McCarthy because he supports President Trump's policies. McCarthy says he knows how to handle people who oppose him. What I have found in this process is you have to take them on. You have to talk about what we have been able to accomplish. He spoke on Fox News and this is USA Radio News. What's on your bucket list? Running a marathon, hiking to the top of a mountain, or maybe surfing? What if I told you you can accomplish all of it at any age? This is Wayne Allen Root, and I'd like to introduce you to somebody that's changed my life, made me feel years younger, maybe saved my life, my Cenogenics physician, Dr. Bob Letta. 
Thanks for the introduction, Wayne. At Cinegenics, we help people look and feel many years younger. We've been in business since 1997. We have locations across the United States, and we've treated over 35,000 patients worldwide. Our age management medicine is proven to work. On the Cinegenics program, you will have your own doctor, exercise counselor, and nutritionist all working together to fine-tune plans especially for you. Thank you, Dr. Letta. I'm 57, and I feel like I'm 30 again. I feel the best of my life. I have the most energy of my life. Are you ready to start feeling the best of your life? Defy your age with Cenogenics. Call now for your free consultation at 888-YOUNGER. That's toll-free, 888-YOUNGER. Or go to Cenogenics.com. All right, crew, let's get her done. Honey, you want to give me a hand? I'm planting that tree, remember? No matter how large or small your digging project may be, no matter how urban or rural, you must always call 811 before any digging project. 811 is our national one-call number, alerting your local utility companies to come out and mark any lines they have near your dig site. You must call 811 at least two to three business days before any digging project so you can avoid hitting our essential buried utilities. This includes natural gas and petroleum pipelines, electric, communication cables, and water and sewer lines. So before you do this or this, make sure you do this. For digging projects big or small, make the call to 811. Brought to you by Common Ground Alliance. Hi, this is Bryce Abel. I'm the producer of Dark Skies, the co-author of AD After Disclosure, and you are listening to the Paracast, the gold standard of paranormal radio. He's trying to fool us there, goof on us. There was no echo. There's nothing wrong with your television set. We are controlling transmission. Randall, you recall last week we've had a kind of fiery discussion in the forums. Right. After we had the interview last week with Richard Bonenfant and a friend of his, Frank Kling, was posting in our forums and Chris O'Brien showed up and there was a a sharp debate. So, Nigel Watson, let's just put you in the thick of it here. What's your take on cattle mutilations? Um, well, I've never investigated any case like that, but um, well, again, I, I, I always associated them with the Uni- United States and with um, these mystery black hel- helicopters. And I think one explanation was that we were to cover up experiments or, um, you know, like fracking or, or, or government activities where we were like testing cattle for radiation and that sort of thing. Um, but it just seems like a rather stupid thing to do because if it was sort of a government testing thing, wouldn't it be just easier just to haul the cow onto the back of a truck and drive off with it? You know, you, you might get dis- just stories of disappearances then, but to have these you know, sinister surgical light incisions and removal of genitals and things seems like, you know, why do that? Uh, which brings us to another explanation that uh, perhaps satanic cults or that sort of thing are sort of practising their uh, dubious activities uh, on these poor animals. Also, it's not just cattle mutilations it's um other animals that seem to be mutilated i think up in yorkshire about a few years ago was a, a ufologist who collected stories of ufo sightings and he linked them with like mutilations and death of um rabbits and pets um in england we've also had um uh, in the early 70s there was a wave of um Phantom helicopter sightings, but I don't think any sort of mutilations were associated with that. But probably because nobody, you know, looked for the link really. So you know, I think the you know, mutilation thing is a um, another area of ufology that's almost compartmentalized, and it's a sort of a no area of study in itself. Well, then you've so, got. Um, well, I'm not. With these cattle mutilations, some of them, you've got these burn marks 
And, uh, you know, I'm tempted to say the cow went into a hypnagogic state and was hit by ball lightning, but we'll, yeah. we'll just we'll just skip that and say, OK. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, even on, on Dartmoor, again, we've had cases, I think, of ponies being um, tortured or mutilated. And a bit, that's been attributed to um, Satanists and that sort of thing. Um, so, you know, it's something that seems to crop up in other parts of the world as well. Let, let's say, let's suppose that aliens do have some sort of involvement with mm. these. Well, then we do have these incidents with cattle that have, have shown these burn marks. Mm. And then we've got these uh, spontaneous human combustion things where, you know, mm. conceivably some kind of uh, technology that burns things from the inside out, sort of maybe, mm. I don't know, along the lines of microwaves or something. I mean, yeah. when we see these effects in, say, you know, the science fiction movie, someone gets zapped by a ray gun and they just yeah. sort of disintegrate and leaving the mm. leaving everything else pretty much intact. I know it's out there. This, again, is fringe ufology, but some of it is mm. pretty weird, you have to admit. Well, it's just made me think about the fact that we call it spontaneous human combustion, but has there been any cases of animal spontaneous combustion, you know, where animal corpses have been found with just a part of them? I suppose people would just presume they've been burnt in a campfire or something like that, but uh, it does make you wonder, really, if there's no new area of study to <laughs> to explore really a bit gruesome well, actually, really i think yeah. <laughs> i was sort of joking about the ball lightning thing with with cattle but the, it was just the other day after the guest that we had on we were talking about cattle mutilations i ran across a picture of a cow that had actually been hit by lightning it was all burnt it was still alive and it had these really bizarre looking burn marks on them in a kind of uh, like a lightning yeah it was it was really uh, quite you know the poor cow right so it does happen. I think also, uh, I, I think lightning has been used as an explanation for um, landing marks and things like that, where people have seen something in the sky and then perhaps have found what they thought was scorched ground where a UFO, I think, might have landed. And, and some of them might have been caused by lightning strikes. Um, I think that's the thing with UFOs. If it's sort of a light in the sky can be associated with other things like, oh, you know, there's been animals being mutilated or by, you know, or, or different other factors. And I suppose if you've got a ufologist there, he'll link anything with anything if you give him <laughs> half a chance. Yeah. And it's a bit scary in itself. But, uh, yeah, I suppose in a way, because I look at things from a UFO perspective and you link it with UFOs, whereas I suppose... Uh, <laughs> It's um, a particular way of looking at uh, anything weird going on. Well, maybe we can sort of uh, skip to something a little bit different now, uh, um, bringing into your knowledge as a psychologist. Now, mm -hmm. in one of your articles, you outlined some of the factors we'd have to contend with if there were an actual alien invasion. And uh, oh, yeah. one, one of them, we have the theoretical physicist Stephen Hawking saying, they may not see us as any more valuable than we see bacteria. And Michio Kaku yeah. is, if they're hostile, it would be like Bambi meeting Godzilla. And the skeptic Robert Schaefer says, to, con to condense what he says into a single sentence, that waging a war on another planet would be a logistical nightmare because of the vast distances. But how, yeah. how do you think the world would respond to actual disclosure or an alien uh, invasion, where they just showed up and said, well, we're here now, uh, you know, like it or I think, not. I think somebody like Stephen Hawking was a bit contaminated by the uh, a similar viewpoint that occurred with um, Orson Welles' mass panic that he created with his War of the Worlds broadcast. And um, I think people have got so used to the idea of um, alien invasion now, I don't think there'd be a mass panic unless... You know, one turned up, you know, like in these old 1950s science fiction films where they sort of, you know, start zapping people in the streets. But I think um, people have come to find the idea of um, alien life or even UFOs to be more um, acceptable. So I think unless, 
you know, we were being really hostile. I don't think it would cause mass panic, really, but it would have a lot of repercussions on perhaps the, you know, financial markets and technology and uh, religion, really. So I think, uh, and politics. So, um, but I don't think it's something we can really be, um, you know, it's just, I, I think it, it's just a fear of the unknown, really, isn't it? That um, we don't know what, um, if, even if we got into contact with um, some alien civilization on another star system, would we be able to communicate at all? You know, we, we can't even communicate with dolphins and, you know, our t- the cat type of communication we have with our own pets is, is different from, like, the kind of communication we're having now. So in a way, I suppose that our idea of Charles's thoughts that we are property is something like perhaps... You know, aliens would treat us either like pets or, uh, you know, would they treat us like pets or would they treat us like we're a nuisance or, you know, some, you know, ufologists like Bud Hopkins and that have said, you know, are they just using us for, you know, a breeding program to create hybrids? we got more to come. Alien hybrids or hubrids as Dr. David Jacobs refers to them. <laughs> Nigel Watson, oh, Gene Steinberg. One. Jay Randall Murphy, will he give us echo? You're in the Paracast. Thank you for listening to GCN. Be sure to visit GCNlive.com today. As you know, neighbors, web hosting can be pretty cheap, but not all hosting is the same. DreamHost wins best of awards year after year. You get unlimited disk space, unlimited bandwidth, and even the low-cost plans put your sites on high-performance SSDs. Want to know more about what DreamHost has to offer? Go to technightowl.com slash host. Once again, that's technightowl.com slash host. First came Attack of the Rockoids, and it was a critically acclaimed success. And now there is the coming of the Protectors. A former military intelligence man is contacted by a space woman in a dream. A dream that turns out to be a nightmare, because evil forces on our distant planet are planning to conquer the Earth. This is gripping science fiction of the classic kind. Attack of the Rockoids and the coming of the Protectors. Find out more at Rockoids.com. That's Rockoids, R-O-C-K-O-I-D-S, dot com. Water is the single most important thing your body needs, so you want to be sure it's the best for you and your family. Since 2005, thousands have depended on Berkey Purified Water. The Berkey Guy provides the lowest priced filtration systems in every size. For incredibly delicious water now and in an emergency, get to GoBerkey.com or call 877-886-3653. 877-886-3653. GoBerkey.com. If you like alkaline water or know someone that does, you're going to love the Dillon Living Water Bottle. It creates alkaline water on the go while reducing plastic waste and saving you money. Made with surgical-grade stainless steel, the Dillon Bottle increases the pH up to 9 to deliver both alkaline and antioxidant water anywhere you want it. Alkaline water is healthier, tastes better, and can even boost energy. The Dillon Bottle makes it easy and affordable to be healthy and achieve optimal hydration. Get your Dillon Bottle today at dyln.co. That's dyln.co. Hunters, anglers, campers, and survivalists. Get back to nature. Expand your horizons with the highest quality, most versatile, unique slingshots and sling bows on the market at slingbow.com. Slingbow products are compact and models start from just $17.98. They're perfect for your bug out bag or storing in your vehicle. Give yourself and your loved ones the excitement and tradition of Slingbow. A new frontier in archery and truly modern twist on this primitive survival tool. Feel the thrill only at slingbow.com. Attention business owners and independent contractors. This is a money-saving message from Tax Mediation Services. If your business owes $20,000 or more in taxes, we can help you today, right now. Listen, dealing with the IRS is no picnic. It's an intimidating and extremely stressful process, and you don't want to go it alone. Our attorneys know every law, every tax break, and every possible opportunity to help you resolve and reduce your tax debt. And if you owe more than $20,000, 
dollars, you may be at the top of their hit list. So don't take your tax debt lightly because it will not go away on its own. The IRS can seize your bank accounts, your home, and even shut down your business. Call our tax experts today at 1-800-261-9818 and let us deal with the IRS while you focus on your business. That's 1-800-261-9818. Again, 800-261-9818. Healthcare reform is confusing, but whether it's finding an affordable insurance plan, keeping your doctor, or being able to afford needed prescriptions, navigating the healthcare system has become a challenge. Control your own healthcare costs and choices with Liberty HealthShare. Liberty HealthShare is not insurance. It is an association of self-pay patients who unite with like-minded people to share the cost of each other's medical needs. Neighbor helping neighbor. Learn more now by going to libertyoncall.org. That's libertyoncall.org. This is Micah Hanks of the Gray Alien Report, and you're listening to the Paracast, the gold standard of paranormal radio. That sliding echo, it starts with no echo and the echo increases. I'm expecting with the next show or perhaps with the episode of After the Paracast, things would get even more interesting on that mm-hmm. score. Mm-hmm. It's really, really, really fun. Let's continue with Randall and Nigel. Go ahead, please. I, I tend to agree with the skeptic Robert Schaefer, actually, in that it would be a logistic nightmare uh, trying to invade mm-hmm. another world from another mm-hmm. planet. There's a lot of energy involved just getting here, let alone managing a supply mm-hmm. chain. Mm-hmm. Perhaps it was so idea of invasion as a human concept anyway. I think between the the two world wars, somebody argued, you know, what's the point of invading? You know, in the past, you had armies and people stole gold and trinkets from the enemy and then went back home or whatever. Whereas, you know, his argument was having world war just destroys the aggressor as much as a defender and, and that you know there's no real point in doing that i suppose the only point is um ideology really and you know you can um dominate the world from a sort of totalitarian point of view or something but um that's more in terms of how things are controlled rather than the use of sort of human concepts really it could be just as equally possible that if the aliens are that much more advanced than we are, Mm -hmm. that uh, for all we know, they had something to do with uh, seeding the planet with life, you know, billions of years ago. And they, they knew full well that it would all evolve into pretty much what it is now. Mm -hmm. And we're just creatures that are mapping out all the natural resources and building an infrastructure. And for all we know, we'll just die off like, the other animals have in past mm. eras and uh, leave the planet vacant for them to just move right in uh, without having to, well, to fire a shot. Well, what you made me think of was the fact that perhaps in you know, a thousands of years ago, we, we did <laughs> we did send spaceships out to explore other worlds or whatever, and that the aliens are us coming back and they've evolved and we haven't and they want to reoccupy Earth because they're the original Earthlings, but I think I'm transcending. I'm, I'm <laughs> transcending the boundaries of science fiction. <laughs> yeah, but, uh, you know, yeah, I think this idea of warfare is also something that's so much in the um, 1950s flying saucer films. You know, War of the Worlds and you know invaders from outer space and that, that sort of idea of them landing and taking away women, basically, and um, mm-hmm destroying all the sort of iconic monuments of the world and that sort of thing seem to be very much the stable of those sort of ideas in the 50s. And I suppose it was also just after the Second World War, so in a way UFOs were seen as a, almost like a playing out of the the Third World War where we'd have atomic weapons and you know flying ships and things. So it was sort of like, not just an intergalactic war or interplanetary war taken, you know, warfare to a new level. Now What's interesting to it. me about so many of those early films 
is that mm. aliens always had to be warlike, except kind of half and half with the day the Earth stood still, where we were warned yeah. that if we didn't follow the straight and narrow, they would take mm. care of us in one fell swoop. Yeah. Anyway, so it's nice to have positive aliens like the ones, say, in Star Trek. And in the mm. movie Forbidden Planet, there were aliens there, but the monster was really the id yeah. of the yeah. individual who expanded his brain but couldn't control the effects of it. So mm. that was something else. That was kind of a Star Trek episode 10 years before Star Trek, if you yeah. realize that. Yeah, it's very good because it has uh, that Star Trek. It's almost like a pilot for Star Trek, but 10 years early. And, uh, and like I say, this is a sort of invisible monster, and it's a monster created by our own minds. I think this is something um, some UFO writers have written about. What, you know, UFOs are like mind monsters, the creations of our mind. And Carl Jung, the psychologist, also wrote an early book on flying saucers where he he regarded uh, um, that UFOs might be mental projections that might actually come into physical existence. But, you know, even if they don't come into physical existence, they're still very symbolic of our own fears that are projected onto things in the sky. And, you know, 1950s, um, all the films reflect... Uh, of a flying saucer films kind of reflect the fear of an, another war and also that the aliens often represent, you know, communists, basically, and also the fear of that, you know, the government will be taken over, you know, invaders from Mars as people with implants and they're, um, they become robots. So I think that's another great fear of uh, the films of that period, that we'd be, taken over and uh, become sort of robots of, uh, at the beck and call of, um, of the aliens. So, um, you know, they, it's quite intriguing how, you know, the subject evolved then. And you oh, see ahead, where, you. for example, robots always had to be evil, except for Data yeah. on Star oh, Trek yeah. Next Generation. I was looking here while we were talking at the blurb for a book called Shoot Them Down, the Flying Saucer oh, yeah. Air Wars of 1952. And we had mm. Frank Fashino on the show to talk yeah. about that maybe 12 years ago, early in the yeah. Paracast history. And this was about the 52 and about alleged examples where we fired on them, which yeah. isn't such a bright idea. But that goes back to Date the Earth Stood Still, because remember what happened there. The spaceship lands and Klaatu. And Gort come out of the spaceship. And as soon as Klaatu reaches to grab something, the nervous soldier shoots him. In response, Gort fires on their vehicle and they get off it. They jump off it just before it disintegrates. Hey, mm -hmm. Nigel Watson, this has been a lot of fun. And we could have started on that subject and done a whole show uh -huh. about it. But we can't because yeah. we're just about out of time. If those... People out there who are really? interested in all the good things you said want to reach you. Do you have a website? Um, I've got a Facebook page. I sometimes write for the Magonia website, which you can uh, look for if you Google uh, Magonia. And, um, uh, and my books are on uh, Amazon as well, if you're interested. Um, my UFO investigations manual um, is actually... Um, uh, at quite a low price in the UK. I think it's something like $27 in the United States. And, um, you know, that's quite a, a, a comprehensive sort of guide to the subject. And um, yeah, so it, just look me up on Facebook is probably the best way. You know, speaking of Contact prices me. for books, $27 is, you know, kind of mid-price. The third edition mm. of Jerome Clark's UFO Encyclopedia, which is going to be out this month, oh, August, yeah. it's going to list for $150. And they have a special yeah. price, by the way, $139. I don't think that Jerry okay. is really happy <laughs> about that. He's kind of bummed out about it, but it's an educational book publisher. So they know how to rip mm. the public off. Hey, yeah. if you want to contact us, check us out on Facebook. Look for the Paracast. Look for two Paracast fan clubs. On that's at 
rather look for us on Twitter as the Paracast, two Paracast fan clubs on Facebook, a group and a community, and we'll just leave them be. We'll have fun with them. We also have a second radio show called After the Paracast. After the Paracast is unfettered, uncensored. We just go on, talk about things, have special interviews, really exciting kind of special show, only for people who join the Paracast Plus. If you join the Paracast Plus, You'll get After the Paracast, a version of this show to answer those on YouTube who can't stand commercials, free of the network ads. All that excitement, and it only starts at $1.49 a week at plus.theparacast.com for more info. And by the way, if you order a five-year or lifetime subscription, we give away lots of free stuff. Check it out, plus.theparacast.com. Nigel Watson, thank you for joining us on the Paracast. Great, thank you for having me. The Paracast, featuring Gene Steinberg and Christopher O'Brien, is a copyrighted presentation of Making the Impossible Incorporated. Tune in next week for a new adventure in The Paracast.